What's up, everybody? How's it going? Uh, Ryan here, back with the Gamecasters podcast, and we are talking with a uh, good friend of the show, Sam McDavid. I've never said your last name in my entire life. I've only said Sam McMeeple, <laughs> and he is here to uh, teach us and talk to us all about his new game that he's designing called Everstone. Sam, how's it going, man? It's good. Uh, I've had many names in the, in the Gamecasters lore. I think Boy Sam is probably the most well-known by the community <laughs> you started off as don't play an eight wasn't that you yeah for like two weeks and uh messaged the instagram inbox one time and then changed it, and it, it lived stuck. in infamy for some reason i will never forget that i don't know why i don't know why certain things stick with me i usually remember nothing of what i say people will reach back out to me and be like oh that thing that you talked about the other day and i'm like i don't know what the hell you're talking i have no clue but don't play an eight i don't know why it stuck out to me i think it was because jeff was like let's figure let, let's guess what he means by that and yeah, I, I i vaguely remember just sort of like a long-winded like you went super deep in thought of just like you know maybe it's like i you shouldn't play anything below an eight point something on bgg and <laughs> i never wanted to fess up like it had nothing to do with anything even close to that but it's a much better uh piece of lore and it wouldn't be a game catcher's production if I wasn't eating while somebody was talking. Uh, so we got to do it snack time. But anyway, I am super excited, Sam, for you to show me your game. Uh, Sam is a budding designer. Actually, do you are you um are you are you doing your own productions? Like, are you making your own studio? Like, what are you doing here? Yeah, I'm uh, building up to run my own Kickstarter in early 2024. Uh, that'd be the right year. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm going through all the processes of I've created the LLC. I've trademarked two of the, the not only the business title, but the actual name that we'll be bringing uh, to market. And so just, you know, trying to do it the official way. Damn, man, that's cool. That's really inspiring. I've been working on a game, as you know, that you've helped me with uh, for years. And it's just, you know, I kind of I get like bouts of of uh, inspiration and then I just plateau. You know, and then I'll go again, and then I'll plateau. And you have just taken it from zero to sixty in like it seems like a weekend. This thing is all uh, of a sudden it's got artwork, it's got play a play testable prototype that he brought to Origins, and it's beautiful. So I, I just want let's just get into it. I'm really excited yeah, about this. Um, so tell us about Everstone. What do we got going on? So Everstone thematically, we are taking on the role of these outcast merchants who have kind of been exiled from their previous life and have come to what is known as Ignis, this up-and-coming developed city, where uh, they've heard rumors of these powerful mystical relics that uh, if you can kind of control and gain the resources needed to repair and restore them to former working glory, then uh, you'll be you'll learn the right to rule Ignis as they move into uh, modern-day civilization. And so it is part one of a, hopefully, part three series for the game that I've been working on building. And so it, throughout the course of the game, players will uh, continue to take turns until one player has reached the uh, 10 space on the reputation track, where at that point, players will complete taking turns. So everyone's had an equal number of turns. And whoever is on the highest, uh, highest on the reputation track ends up being the winner. And so it's got a lot of familiar, comfortable uh, mechanics that are found in other Euro games, but it is an action selection game based on, we'll use red as sort of the overview of the player board. Sure. Uh, this represents your caravan within the city of Ignis. And so this is you, your little uh, traveler. And on your turn, you'll be able to move to one of the three uh, action spaces that you weren't on previously. Take the main action, followed by if your storage is open, you'll be able to take a little modifying action either during or after the turn based on its action. And the game is built on 75 different multi-use relic cards, which uh, as you repair and restore them, you'll slowly be building up these uh, various amounts of engines uh, to then perform those actions that fall below your character. It's Look sort at of the, the artwork on these it. damn things. Holy shit, this artwork is it's fucking fire. So I'll give a shout out. So this is TJ Jacob. He is a, a friend slash former colleague that I met in a former life while working at Lego up in Enfield, Connecticut, or down in Enfield, Connecticut. And uh, the art that is shown right now uh, is half 
my rudimentary graphic design and half of his final uh, art. And so the illustrations, we have sort of the background and the um, kind of stone slab will end up remaining the same, but what's found on the actual table will be unique to each card. Wow. How much and work then, goes into this, all these cards? Is that the uh, bulk of your of your work right now? So the it's actually the rule book has been the bane of my existence. Oh yeah. Um in the like the way my brain works, and this is can totally be cut out from like the if people are find this boring, but with the ADD style brain, the like level of detail need needed for like formatting and making a quality rule book is just uh, extra energy that needs to be exerted where I could spend all day. I've ported all of the cards into a spreadsheet to balance them. So it takes, I guess that's probably the easiest way to describe. There's two parts that make up a relic card, uh, the front and back, as standard cards work. <laughs> but uh, there's a few different items that go into them from you know the normal title, flavor text, illustration that don't really need any balancing, just need to look pretty and grammatically look correct. Uh, you have the cost associated with each of the relics, which is found on this little colored banner up in the left side of the card. Okay. We have the uh, sell reward, which is found on the paper that says reward right now, which is just placeholder uh, paper. And then we have the relic action that is on the bottom, which is found in the blue, for this one, blue slab, found at the bottom of the card. And we have kind of slightly above that off to the left, side if i'm looking at the screen correctly yeah with the uh, x and the black arrow yep so uh relics can get scrapped for a slight bonus with the the it will is known as the discard bonus and then on the back side of them they have a free tool that is found on the side and a discovery combination which are the three dice below it and i can get into like how all those different works things work here but to your normal que your original question of uh do, how much effort does it take? I've slowly been building out a formula to kind of just show what each of those numbers are valued at um, to make sure that there's no runaway broken combination. And even okay. yet, I'm sure there's going to be plenty that are discovered throughout the game. Well, take us back a little bit further uh, real quick. Why? Why do we have Everstone? What inspired you to design this game? What is? How did you know this is the kind of game I want to make. How many iterations did it go through to get to where it is mechanically today? Like, t talk to me about how this started. So, uh, as I feel like very, um, don't know the right word, but like akin or uh, relating to the last nook, um, talking about the different levels of a gamer, I yeah. feel like there's a fork in the road in that sort of um, kind of journey if you progress to a high enough level where you either are like, uh, I'm so obsessive about this. I need to try and make some form of like income or like just make it all not feel like a waste of time. And there's the left side, which is content creation and the right side, which is uh, game design. I'm sure that that's very a simplistic view of it, but um, I, my, my technical schooling background is as an industrial designer and I've kind of been surrounding by games, you know, my entire life. Uh, so the, Kind of the impetus of everstone and why everstone is i had recently played it's a wonderful world and Great can't game. stop and michaela wasn't a big fan of the engine building in it's a wonderful world which kind of like was like ah well i really like that yeah it's a bummer ju Great juice game. is going mm. and so it sort of one late night was like well maybe i can maybe i can do something about that maybe i can create that same feeling that i get but make it a game that's enjoyable for us was sort of the kickoff of Everstone. It sort of just was like a slow burn. I don't think there was like this, like wake up, cold sweat need to like bring this to reality. It's been <laughs> sort of a, a COVID pastime that started to get enough steam behind it where uh, doing product development and bringing and sourcing uh, new concepts and bringing them to market through an e-commerce company that I worked at the past five years. Uh, I was getting kind of burned out in like the, the project management process of doing it for products that I wasn't passionate behind. And so it, it's kind of tied into this as sort of the, I've caught myself rambling now. <laughs> yeah. So the kind of the, the design inspiration, I felt like going, like I tried the content creation sort of posting path for like maybe two weeks and that just felt like work didn't like setting up 
and taking photos and it just it was taking away from the hobby and so slowly um i would i would just start to kind of like tinker here and there with we play a game and then i'd be lying awake at bed at night be like what could i do to change that game just for changing its sake and started listening to like the gabe barrett uh design podcast and just kind of absorbing all that content and uh it kind of feels like a fever dream to where we got to now that's crazy that's awesome well good for you dude i cannot wait to get into this so tell me what it's all about so how do we play this sucker we gotta double check uh okay so so we'll finish the setup for the game really quick you don't have a macro built yet to set this thing up (laughs) Uh, i barely barely got the macros to work to be able to tuck cards under for keeping them (laughs) it's uh if anyone can do it it's you i'll I'll say that it took a took a like a a prescribed concerta and eight hours to build the the only macros i have going in here already nice but uh so the game is action selection we'll explain the final setup in a minute but there are so are you going for a it's a wonderful world kind of feel like what's the feel of this game would you say uh so the the i guess the the feel i'd compare to sort of what my design goals were for this game was I am very like into the Dune Imperiums and sort of the big four player, like enjoyable, like cool interaction games. And I wanted something that Michaela and I could play on like a school night, so to speak, or like just, you know, after a long day of work plays within an hour, but still gives you the feeling of like a a big game with a small footprint and a small playtime. Yeah, that sounds great. That was sort of the goal. So everything that had a design consideration, it was like, it can it speed the game up? Can it limit the footprint? And so that's sort of what led into the multi-use cards, trying to do the bulk work of a lot of what's going on. Uh, I tried to do my best to like make setup as quick and simple as possible, and for like also tear down and reset for the next game. Like just really thinking about how all the pieces will interact just to like speed that up because you know uh, having gone from like a non covered gaming table surface to a covered one of like being able to leave games set up and things like that just the setup sometimes is reasons that we won't pull out really fun games like grand hotel or like other ones that have that quick place play time but is sometimes just finicky for setup i just punched one uh the new stefan feld game marrakesh I just got mm-hmm. the like essential edition in the mail and that game is so fucking good. It's so good. But I just sat there and punched it for I don't know, it felt like an hour and a half and it's going to be a bear to get to the table because of that reason. There's so many components, there's so much stuff. It even came with this like little organizer tray, which is pretty cool, but I still don't know if that's going to be enough for me to want to play it all the time. That's a bummer. So it's cool to hear you say that that there's uh, a quick a quick setup and a quick teardown for this. And like, it's even kind of tied into um, like the sort of trying to make the game digestible for a base game. I had to kind of weed out some things for the expansions. Um, But I I have one that is, I'm already kind of like getting to paper just so I don't forget right now, but all of that has built in like that. It doesn't change setup at all and it doesn't change playtime. And what I really liked about, uh, Everdell originally before the big box. The big box is a little big now, but the fact that if you had an expansion or two that you enjoyed playing with, you could just shuffle up and keep it set up in. And yep. so I really like the games that you just throw the stuff in and never have to Same. separate. That's the best kind of expansion. Agreed. So that uh, you'll probably see um, kind of owed to a lot of other good games in uh, Everstone. But uh, the kind of core gameplay loop it will be move your character within your caravan, perform the actions, uh, pass to the next player, rinse and repeat sort of thing. Okay. And so the four main actions we have, we have the barter action, which has to do with the kind of city of Ignis, which this represents the where our caravans will start on. This represents the like the outpost encampment where all sort of kind of trade and where you can find the market is okay and so 
you will when you you'll either keep your caravan here or you'll return it from any of the explore locations to then purchase a card from the market based on its cost above and then you'll be able to perform one of the two rewards and so in our base game these are these are the two that are printed on the board um there is six of them i think total so you can change up kind of the two actions will cool. get there so that changes from game to game um but that's the main barter action you'll get the the opportunity to buy a card and then either spend a resource to go up the same colored track or gain a resource of your choice and optionally discard a card from your storage okay when cards are gained your storage acts as your hand so you'll never be able to have more than four relics at any given time that you haven't like repaired and when you take them you have to immediately place them into one of the four open spaces and relics while they're in your storage are dead weight so they don't um do anything for you until they've been repaired and so each space has what's printed on it it's like auxiliary action so for the barter action that we quickly went over uh if you have the storage space below it open you'll be able to take both of the rewards instead of choosing just one so this action is attached to this card Yep. So they all, it. if you think of it as like four columns, everything is oriented in sort of that action sequence. Hmm. And so for simplicity of remembering what to do, once you've moved your character, start as high as you can. Um, we haven't explained what uh, caravan upgrades are, but there's a potential to have an additional action up here. Uh, but once you've moved your character, everything goes from top to bottom for performing actions. Exactly. So the second action, and feel free to jump in at any time if I'm rushing through things, uh, is the explore action. So this is a pseudo worker placement type thing. So at the start of the game, in a two player game, we have six villagers, uh, which are represented by these tiles, that four will start out within the city limits that you can interact with. And two of them are sort of what in what we're calling the outer limits that you don't have the ability to interact with yet. Okay. So when you take the explore action, you'll be able to move your caravan to one of the open explore locations. And so we have the four villager locations and then the one static one. You'll then, depending on influence that is here, uh, whoever has influence tokens there will gain whatever the reward is based on the number of influence that they have there. So I'm, these aren't supposed to be there, but say I already had a purple there. When you moved here, I would be able to optionally discard a card. If do I do, you get to, to do that if you moved there too. Yep. Or so only when somebody uh, else moved there. These are activated whenever the location is activated. It can b- it. be by yourself or an opponent. Okay. And so each one can hold up to three influence tokens. There's you can kind of see the three dots that are next to the influence deck. Um, and that can be that's total so it could be three for one player or sort of in our two player game two and one uh but those are capped at three tokens can be held there so okay. that'll be performed before the action's even taken then you'll perform whatever action is either on the printed space or interact with the villager once that has happened if it's a villager space they will leave the city and it'll be replaced by a new one and so this is sort of the cue to see oh, what Oh, it cycles through kind of like like an Onitama kind of thing almost. You use it and then it goes away. Yeah, so like you can kind of see the cards off to the side. That's a really good comparison. I haven't had anyone uh, reference that yet. Yeah, it just reminds me of you use it and then immediately it goes away and then it can it comes back. Exactly. That's cool. I like that. That's cool. So there are 12 visitor tiles total in the game. We're only going to be interacting with uh, six today. And... We only have one in our current game state that provides a way to get a reputation point. So this would be go down three spaces on one of the tracks to gain the reputation. Is reputation but, how you you win? You said you have to get to ten or yes. something. Yep. Okay, so, so this kind of okay, so this is kind of more where you were talking about Dune Imperium here. Okay. Exactly. So get I've always been a fan of like uh, Dune, Catan, Moonrakers. Uh, not necessarily a fan of munchkin but it still also has that <laughs> 10 race um i've always enjoyed those sort of you got to play not- hansa teutonica there's a 10 race there too 
Ah, uh, no. You got to play that, baby. List. <laughs> yeah. I got a list of 10 games that all race to 10 that are my 10 favorites. <laughs> but that would be the Explore action. And if your storage space is open below it, if you have a yellow resource within your reserve, you can spend that to place an influence out on the location that you're on, mm. which would be this guy. But you can only activate this if there's no card on top of it? Correct. Um, okay. I completely understand this action. I don't. I think I might have missed exactly what you do on the barter action. Is that so how to get the cards? Action is interacting with the market. So you'll move your caravan so it'll not only free up explore spaces that other people are on because they'll have to move back to... Okay, so limits. you're you're using this space to buy these cards. Yep, and okay. then... If it's already there, you just don't move it? Correct. So you okay. can still barter even if you're already at Ignis. And then after you buy a card, you get one of these two bonuses? Yep. Okay, okay. Understood. Sorry about and that. If Keep your going. storage is open, you'll be able to claim both of them. Right. And so that is those two. The third action is the harvest action. So this will be the main way that you'll gain resources within the game. Okay. So what you'll do here is we have the three harvest dice. Did my mouse just crap out? Mm -hmm. That we will roll. And this is kind of akin to the spinoff of Can't Stop. You'll choose two to combine, which will determine which track you move up. So in this example, I'd move up yellow. The remaining die that I oh, did combine will through be the two quantity. through five, six through eight, or nine through twelve. Got it. Okay. Right, right. Um, so the the other die will be the quantity of that color type that I gain. So if I chose to combine the four and uh, three, I would move up one space on the yellow and gain six yellow to add to my reserve. If later on, say, then you took the harvest action and decided to combine the two four to also go up yellow. Uh, each space can only be occupied by one player's token. So, so you'll leapfrog over it mm. and you'll gain whatever bonus you land on. So in, a, in addition to also getting five yellow. Exactly. So the only spaces, and I haven't finished setting up for a two player game, uh, there'll be more exposed spaces in a higher player count game. But the only changes for uh, two player are you have less visitors to interact with, and then these three spaces get covered up. Are these two tracks more valuable to go on to since they're less likely to be rolled? Yeah, so the resources are more valuable as well as um, sort of each track has a different strength that it technically provides. So the blue track gives you the ability to hold more stuff because it has two uh, place influence bonuses and then two reserve extensions, which we'll explain those in a minute. Uh, when you're placing out in influence from your reserve, as you free up stacks of three, it'll create more space to hold more resources. Mm. So you'll start... Whenever you spend influence, whether it's placing out onto the board or for blue relics, they have a space where you place influence to activate their ability. It'll come from left to right. And so as you free up three, you'll get a new spot. And as you free up 12, there's actually a reputation point attached to it. So the blue track is all about giving you the ability to hold more. The red track is all about giving you the ability to gain more, where it has sort of the three resource bonuses to begin with printed on it, but it also has these basic relics, these green bonuses that we'll explain in a few minutes. Okay. And then the, the yellow track is more kind of just opportunities by being able to buy relics and getting an additional personal quest. Um, cool. But yeah, the, the balancing of everything is 90% of the time you'll be able to get yellow. Uh, I think it's 70% of the time you'll be able to get the other two. And it is scaled where you'll get yellow. Majority of the time, you'll get. I think it's, I have it printed in the rule book somewhere, but it's on average you get like 2.6 red 
uh, three bl point two blue and I think five yellow on average or something like that. Wow. Okay. I'll have to double check it. But uh, the other part of the harvest action is if we look at the top of the relic deck, we have our free tool. This represents the free die manipulation that is available to you whenever rolling. So what looks like a re-roll is actually a flip symbol. TJ is not in the board game space. So. Got it. Um, but we there are three different free tools available. There are flip, there are increase a die by one, and decrease a die by one. Mm -hmm. And so that is available for free whenever you roll. So if we wanted to go up, say, okay. the blue track, we could decrease this guy here by one to make that a five. And then get five. Blue. You can do that on any of the three dice. Yes. So it cool. does, you you get to do it once for free. If your storage is open, you can spend resources to do more dice manipulation. So yellow allows you to decrease dice. Red allows you to flip, and blue allows you to increase. And you can for do that as many times as you want to pay. Exactly. And one of the things is you might be thinking, why would you want to like spend resources when you're trying to gain resources? The final part of the card is the discovery combination. So if at any point you are able to match that combo on the top of the card, you can choose to forego going up any of the tracks and gaining any resources to discover that relic and working condition. So when Ooh. we talked about gaining market cards to add them to your storage, all market cards start as like broken down and need to be repaired. When you discover a relic, it's already working. So say we discovered this guy, you'd be immediate, immediately be able to discard it to gain its reward, or you could keep it and tuck it under any of the action spaces uh, that you choose. So it wouldn't so that suck is, up a spot in, in this board here. Yeah, it sort of cheats the cycle of having to gain to your storage, repair, uh, which we haven't talked about the last action. But it, And it am I mostly using there. resources to buy these cards anyway? Yes, so resources are spent for repairing. Uh, in our game, we have actually three uh, explore actions that you'll be spending resources I to see. gain other things, but resources are primarily used to repair relics. Are these resources ever stones? Uh, so these, when you are successfully able to fuse them, it creates an ever stone. Gotcha. And so that's actually not in this game. It actually got pulled out. What? Um, so I don't know when it's coming back in, but the idea is that these relics, so a little lore that's not uh, total public knowledge, is discovering Ignis is Act 1. So there was this like Atlantean-style civilization that was here prior that up and left abruptly. And okay. we don't know that. So we're coming in at the point of time where like they just up and moved house and they've left all their scraps and kind of these powerful relics that we don't fully know how work yet. And so Everstone is what makes them run efficiently, but we don't know how to make Everstone yet. So we're just using the three resources of the game. This is cool, man. <clears throat> very, very cool. So right, that last is one. the harvest action. The rema last remaining action is so we've gone, we've gotten relics into our storage. We've started to collect resources that we need to repair them. Uh, the repair action is, say, this is this is a good example. So say we had two blue. Oh, not that. We need two blue. We need four yellow. And then we need two of any. So... We've gone, taken turns to get these two relics, and now we're ready to repair them. So to start, we'll choose which relics we're repairing this turn and pay for all of their repair costs. And So, so you could theoretically, be, you could repair four. You could repair if up you to had four this if you stuff. Pulled. Exactly. But you couldn't pay for one, gain its reward to get more and resources to then repair too. the other. Exactly. So okay. it's you're paying for all the ones you want to repair up front Got and it. then resolving them one by one. Understood. So we have our resources needed. So we would return. What is that on the five. bottom? Uh, so I'm looking at the the Thelonish card. It, it's two, two blue, one yellow, one of anything, and then one influence token. 
So when you spend influence to repair relics, you'll place them out on the location that you're on. So in this example, we'd end up taking two of our tokens here. And because we're back at Ignis, we'll choose, oh man, my mouse is, uh, one of these nine spots here to place them in. So at, at the start, we only have access to these three because they're the ones touching the city. Okay. Uh, and so these, different than the residual bonuses from the Explore locations, these are one-time bonuses. So if we placed it here, we would get one blue. So and this would the be the only one that could go there. Exactly. But that frees up the ability for influence to be placed on this next one, which would bump the influence track. So this not you're not really paying influence here. You're like spending it to spread it out onto the board. And isn't so paying you, you influence want is a to good get thing. it off of here, right? So, exactly. Okay. I see. So not all relics require influence to be spent to repair them but it is one of the two ways to kind of get an influence out onto the board. Is it possible that you don't have influence on your board? And then it you is. Be so able close to repair the card. Uh, yeah. When you work towards late game, because influence is fixed, um, you can choose to at first reclaim it from explore locations in end game if you really need. Uh, but when there are some, uh, there are some actions that allow you to, like this guy is not available in our game, allows you to trash an influence. So this trash and send it back here. It'll just send it off to the supply. So once you've freed it off of here, it's never going to block spaces for you again, but okay. it acts as a pool for you to reuse it an, an additional time. Gotcha. Oh boy. Don't mind me while I complain about my mouse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we technically would place those out and now we get the choice of either claiming its reward which we it would be it's a one time bonus that you gain for repairing it and then we'll bring, bring, ugh, bring it to the discard or okay. we choose to repair and keep it which will tuck the card below which gives you the this storage ability space down here. exactly but it goes directly below the location you've stored it in I see so you when choosing where to add it, you want to try and think about which rep, like space you want to store it in because it'll end up going below that one. And, and so I have scripted the little keep buttons here. Oh, I but, see. Um, and when you can have more than one in uh, a column, they can hold up to eight tucked under. But the next one, like if we repaired this one first and then repaired this one down under it, it would be there. So everything continues to go down. Sure. This is the wonderful world stuff. I get it. Yeah. And so those are the repair and keep. It's storage ability allows you to spend a blue to relocate a relic. So if you ended up wanting to shift it in your storage, you can move a relic from one storage space to the other, or you can move one kept relic from one Ooh. location to the other. Okay. Um, but you can only do one. So both of these aren't infinite. It's only one time per action. And so this one's infinite. Yep. This one is also infinite. Uh, so this one is just one per action. Okay. So these two. Okay. Interesting. So that you can think of it. These three, everything besides harvest activates after the main action. And only can be activated once. The harvest. I wonder, I wonder if you make like the arrow red on the ones that can only be once or, or something, you know, some way to, to mm. delineate because these look like they're all the very right, the same I'm type using of thing. The same arrow. Yeah, I wonder. We'll capture that. My only other uh, thing that I had when you were doing this is if I take these off of this stack, for instance. It looks like I get the point now, mm -hmm. but really I don't get this until they're all gone, right? Uh, yes. You and so if you look kind of to the left side, it kind of the small iconography shows this the order here? which influence is supposed to get removed. It needs to be a little. Oh, bigger. oh, so you would get this before you get all these. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what okay, we haven't really explained yet is if you look at the top of the um, main board. 
there's global achievements. So the first person to remove all 15 is actually one of the achievements. Cool. Okay, sweet. Continue. Just making chicken scratch to remember your comment. <laughs> um, so th that is the four main actions. And we've talked about all of the heart those. So we've kind of explained the entirety of what our board is. The last things that we need to talk about before being able to set up. We talked about the global achievements. Uh, once we're a few turns into the game, I can run through what those are. Uh, we have these four cards over here. So these three, the personal quests, the basic relics, and the reserve extensions, all can be gained by that static printed uh, space on the board when you explore. So up here. Ah, okay. That's this. Here. As well as through the influence tracks, and then a bunch of the cards will give you ways to gain access to them as well. So we'll explain them left to right because that's just how they're signed up. So reserve extensions, when you gain one, you'll be able to add it to your storage immediately. So they take up a storage spot, so you can't actually put relics in them, but Ooh, it's still but you'll always get that ability you now. Yeah. To get the ability still. And so it immediately allows you to hold up to five more resources. Wow. And when repairing, if you have three resources, you can choose to repair this as well, which will tuck it below. So you'll lose two spaces to be able to um, hold relics. Oh, it's but it two, this up is that two space spaces. Again. Okay. So two of your eight spaces would be taken up by this. Sorry. Uh, so th this will end up tucking under. So all you'll see is the, the three spots here i see you're just saying you lose two two spaces of the to hold resources got it yep. yeah okay but it frees up the ability for you to place relics in that storage spot again that's cool and then we have personal quests so these will each start the game with one <laughs> along with our starting quest so these are the only piece of hidden information in the game okay. uh, everything else is public knowledge but these are ways to achieve reputation points so they're sort of kind of leading paths to kind of like get the first initial ball rolling okay um, how many points are they worth there are all of them are just worth one so once you've satisfied its requirements you'll claim it by placing a little influence on it is that a free a free action do you just kind of say i did it and show it? yeah so at the end of your turn you'll let the the group know whether you've completed any personal quests or global achievements got it so those happen um automatically so like once you've completed your turn you you must like you can't save it for a big dump at the yeah, end yeah it's like one of the steps you go through in your turn is checking personal exactly quests. yep those are personal quests so everyone will start with this one of having four relics in one column or having one relic under each column um I believe that's an outdated verbiage of the card. So then we have basic relics. So when you gain these, these will get tucked under your player board immediately. And so then you'll have access to this uh, action bonus. But okay. on the at the point you when you acquire it, you have the option if you have two yellow resources to spend them to have it flip before it gets tucked under. And oh, so is, this, kind of is this what's underneath? Yeah, it. cool. Yeah. So it, early in the game, you might want to invest because it's going to give you kind of a residual additional resource. But as late game, it might not, you know, you'd have to activate it twice just to get back the front cost to it. And so these uh, should, I might have done. Okay, there are few different there might be multiple green, blue by mistake okay <laughs> i'll fix that later so just for reference there's not an easy way to get red there's supposed to be but that one did not make it into the <laughs> and into here well that's good to know so okay it there there should be six different ones in here it looks like they're heavy blue right now and there are 12 total so they repeat twice uh, the last part, we won't have to worry about these because those are additional content. Damn, I already got additional content. Stretch goals. Well, it's more like to, there's 12. Those are just extra visit, visitor tiles mm. and these. 
Mm, uh, I see. There, We're just, there yeah. is already planned Kickstarter stretch goal content if we unlock it, but those will oh, be in the game no matter what. Okay. So cart upgrades, also known as caravan upgrades, um, will be caravan upgrades in the final. When you gain one of those, you will draw the top one and immediately choose which way you want to orient it. So there's a one side that is location specific. So this one would have to go above the barter action if you chose to use it this way. Ah, these are or, what go up here. Okay. Yeah. So you'll tuck under whatever action that you're not using. And so say we chose to put this one above our explore. Um, we would lock it and do one of these guys to it. And so now whenever we take the explore action, we'd first get to gain a resource of choice, draw a relic from the top of the deck, and optionally discard our relic from our storage. And so these kind of pre-build your engine, but you can only have one above each action space. What's the question mark icon? So that just means that it can go... Un Either way? Un yeah, it can go under any uh, space. Ah, I see. So the one with oh, because the there's some that oh, I see. This one here, you must play it under your barter. Right, right, right. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. And these are all placeholder iconography. That's the next thing that TJ will be working on once we're done with the box cover. Cool. Um, this is just personal preference. Nothing to take seriously um it might be cool if you had like a like anyone line. that calls themselves something meeple yeah <laughs> like if you had like a little line like here mm -hmm. i guess you can't really do it here or here just to it would i think visually it might look more column -esque, column esque yep um yeah at the very beginning it was, I mean, it's easy. It's so easy to understand and get, but it, mm -hmm. I feel like it might be even that much more visually appealing if there was some other way of delineating the fact that these are all in a column. So the under sketch that I've received, it these are going to almost look like four different storage rooms. And this is like a hallway. Cool. And so there's going to be kind of like doors popping out as like the indicator down. And, yes. uh, I definitely resonate with, yeah, it's going to be more of that linear showing off kind of to cement, even though like once you kind of take a few actions, it'll make sense. Just the the imagery should dictate that before playing the first time, too. Yeah, I mean, that is the smallest, the nittiest of nitpicks, I think, because uh, it looks it looks so freaking good. Like if you didn't do that, it wouldn't be like, well, this is this is a you know, I wouldn't even mention it probably. But I feel like, hey, we're on the ground floor here. No, you get you if uh, you have enough impact, you'll get to be uh, on the box. Oh baby! Well, okay. So I was going to tell you, I did um, a ton of work for Matt Cousineau's game Kyperium mm -hmm. and the rule book, and because uh, I have a I have a proofreading background. I was a court reporter for a while. And so we had to do a lot of proofreading. And so I've, um, I did a lot of work on, on that rule book. And also my good buddy, Jeremy, um, his, a couple of his board games that he created, uh, I did some rule stuff for him there and he's designing an RPG right now called grit that I'm helping him with the rules on. So if you need any rules assistance, like you were talking about, I would love to, um, get in yeah, there. What's and your, what's your bandwidth look like for kind of just availability? Um, I would say send me whatever you have if you want, if you can, if you want for your rules, and I will look it over uh, and give you notes whenever I whenever I can get around to it, which you know I could do. Um, yeah, cause I have so I have that all. Um, and we'll do a quick aside before jumping back in, so cutting it up will be easier. Yeah, um, yeah I can send you the full PDF because I'd say ninety percent of it's done. The last part I have to do is like the relic archive about like being particular about if this relic interacts with that relic, how to do X, Y, Z for just trying to get some of that up front. So people don't yeah. have to go to BGG. Sure. But uh, on each backside of the reserves is these different solo bots to play against. So I'd love if you're interested to do some of the play testing to kind of give feedback on that. And it, 
it's built off of the solo style of Arc Nova. Yeah, I see that. Okay, sweet. So sweet. I would love to a, do that. In a standard, you start with five, and there's like little campaign scenarios of it tells you which relics to start with and how to do your starting setup. Um, so there's sort of this, it's not like a campaign, but it's like little challenges. Because um, I really took from Arc Nova and uh, It's a Wonderful World solo of the little scenarios of how to try and succeed. Very cool. I haven't um, played It's a Wonderful World solo, but Arc Nova yeah, solo is one of the doesn't feel like It's a Wonderful World. It's more <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine it would. <laughs> but we'll, we'll jump through this. It, uh, it'll probably be, if we have to cut it short too, we can. Um, but it'd probably play about a little less than an hour um, once things wrap. Because it's about 15 turns is what most games have been playing in. Cool. But jumping back into things, the last thing we need to explain, because we've now explained all four of the other cards that aren't relics, is for setup, what we'll need to do is each player was dealt three starting relics to choose one to keep, which will immediately start tucked under your storage in any action spot you want. You'll get to choose one of the two to store, which will start in your storage. And then you'll choose one of them to discard, which will gain its resource cost as your starting resources. Oh, boy. Big decisions early. So okay, It's technically um, done in real time, but I can walk you through on my side sort of, or simultaneously, not real time. Um, my yeah, like what your thought, thought process is? Yeah. Would be we each should have a personal quest, which, again, might. Also, Sam, does this start on the barter action, or does it start off the board and you pick the first action? So it's been where you'll start on the barter action as we've just traveled to Ignis, but uh, I'm open to still removing that because originally it was travel, and thematically you just traveled to the city, but now mm. that it's no longer called that, um, there's no real thematic reason. But okay. uh, I'm. it was a way which we'll find... Uh, with a lot of the playtesting that I've done with non-gamer gamers, um, just sort of like mid-level gamers, there's already so much, like you just said, with like choosing your starting setup that like there's kind of information overload that simplifying So one only decision. three, giving them only a choice of three actions. Exactly. And so we can play with our quests face up as public knowledge too, just for the audience to kind of see all in one spot. But with my, I have end of harvest action showing the sum of six or less. So that doesn't really influence my decision. But I'm seeing that I have one here that gives me red and one here that Needs spends red. red. Yeah. So my thought is potentially to keep this one. And now the decision is where I want to keep it. Um, I probably will just tuck it under here for no other reason than I want to have this one repaired before I come back here and take it. And so since I'm already on barter, this taking up space right now won't hurt me. And so I've done my decide which to keep, decide which to store, which so means I'll that reward. discard this, and I'll get one of each as my starting resources. Uh, let's make sure we're doing the right. And then this extra guy here, Typically, when we're placing influence, it must go on the location that you're on. But to start, we get to choose one of the uh, explore locations to place it on. And so sticking with that C red, play red, I'm going to stick with placing on the spot that will give me red residuals. And so that um, is what is indicating the spend and influence. This, this is an influence here that you just got? That's what that is. Uh, so that was in so the white in the uh, the cost banner, um, that bottom was spending an influence. This guy, I didn't take the reward, so all oh, that so, I'm gaining from this is just a, what's in the banner. I see. So you can either take the reward or take these, or or you only get this and the the starting. For starting, you only get what what's in the banner. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, well, then let me go over here and see what I got going on. So I have complete a row or a column of four upgrades under your player board. Okay. Um, 
that's cool. And then have two influence tokens in the same explore location. Okay, I like that. Uh, so this one gives me one of any resource, and and I take a market action. Yep. Is that right? Wow, that's pretty good. Um, and and the market action is is that the rolling the dice? Uh, the market action is just purchasing a card. From oh, market, getting market a card. Route. Okay, okay, I see. Wow, and it basically gives you the resource you need to get one of these potentially. Yeah, so if, if you don't care about getting this one, you'll get a free card out of that card. Okay, so you, I see what you did there. Um, all right, so this one says, what is this, discard a card to draw a card or scrap yep. a card? Which, so not only will it give you a card from the top of the deck, but whichever card you choose to discard, it'll fire the ability um, in its little ah, discard bonus. Got it. Okay, that's kind of nice. Uh, and then this one, help me with this one. So this is spend an influence. So okay. you'll place an influence on, on the space to gain a resource. And so not only is it giving you resources, but it's freeing up your reserve. And can I then in the future take take from this card to put on the board or are they on this card forever? So they'll be stuck on this card. In our game, this um, trash and influence token from your board guy here, you can choose to take from that one. But typically influence on cards will be stuck there for the game. Stuck there for the game. Okay. Um, interesting. I like the idea of getting resources and cycling through cards. So I think I want to keep this guy. Um, let's see. The barter action is associated with the market action, right? So yeah, if you doubled them up, you would get two cards around, which uh, might be too isn't much bad but it might turn into the fact where you like one of the things is if your storage is full uh -huh. and you get to gain a card before gaining that card you can choose to discard one sure so having a full storage is a way to almost run a discard style engine i was gonna say so you get that discard bonus then for discarding yeah. right um okay that sounds a little advanced for me i am going <laughs> to um, I think I like the idea of having it under the harvest action. Um, so I'm going to put it there. And then um, hmm, I think I like the name Rod of Abundance. So I'm going to go with the <laughs> Rod of Abundance. Although this gives, me, this gives me a lot of resources I could use to start the game off as well. So yeah, okay, then we'll take the expanding travel case. Um, hmm, where does it go? Let's see. What are our base camp rewards? Spend any resource to go up any track or... So uh, if you also have a iconography to... These must be the same. Ah, spend... Okay, okay, so there should be maybe an equal sign or something there. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, so spend any resource to go up that resource's track. Right. Or gain any resource and or discard a card? Yep. Okay. Uh, very cool. So I think I'll put it here for now because relocating my relics is not super important to me at this point. And I will discard this to gain a blue, a yellow, three anythings. Right? Yep. Uh, all right. So am I grabbing these here? A blue, a yellow, three anythings. Uh, what do... Okay, so what should I look for that I want to spend these on? Uh, so for just getting into it, well, things, places to look are relics that you're looking to repair. Yeah. Um, so the, that cost on the left there. Okay. The actions that are required ah, in the... right. So, which all of them will provide or use a different resource. So that, sure. Uh, and then yellow is the most universal one. So it's the easiest sure. to get, but it also a lot of the You're gonna abilities. You're going to spend it the most as well. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, let me take, oops, not you. Let me take two more of you. 
and hmm, I guess I'll take a red, and then I can put. You get to put this guy, this into guy, one of the in spots. any of these spots, right? Yep. So we got gain red, gain yellow, gain blue, draw one or discard one. Oh, that's what I would get if somebody went there. You're saying, right? Yep. I see. Um, and you went to gain red because that's the most difficult to gain. Uh, it was sort of I have this red engine. Oh, you got the that red I'm starting engine to build going. out. I see. I see. This is discard a card. Yep. To then gain the. Bonus. All right. I'm not going to think too hard about it. We'll just go there. <laughs> so we are yeah. all set this up. This is supposed and... to just be uh let's show everybody how the game plays, not necessarily let's think too hard here. So and so to, to determine the first player, it's the player with the least amount of resources. So mm. I will get to take the first action of the You game. get the you get the queen. <laughs> That's your first player token. That's great. Uh well so it's a token that fits within the punch board is sort of what it'll end up being. I see. Um, that's funny. Technically, it may change to just being a first player card that gets tucked under your reserve because uh, nothing will tuck on the top there. Okay. Um, but for right now, it's the big old queen. I like and it. So we'll do our best to remember the turns we're taking, which means if I happen to cross the 10 threshold before you, you mm -hmm. get one more turn. If you cross it, you win the game. Game over. Yep. And sure. so if we end up both on the same spot, the tiebreak is who ascended the influence track the fastest. So no matter which, um, we'll get rid of these guys, which track ascends, like if, if you I made it all the way up the yellow, it'll shift off over to here mm. and I lock see. in. And so that no longer can move. But so for our game, you could race up the track to get these three points and you'd also own the tiebreak. But of the, I think, close to 125 play tests now, I've only seen why maybe two ties. Wow. Okay. It's not as impressive because I think maybe like 50 of those have been solo plays. <laughs> <laughs> and they both happened then? What? How did that make sense? Yeah, it was crazy. Someone <laughs> came out of nowhere and just set up and I wasn't looking. All right, so I get to take the first turn of the game. So I think I'm going to take the harvest action just because rolling dice is fun. And I have rolled a six, two, three, and. Oh, that would get you some. Against that. So I'm going to actually spend a red. Because okay. my storage is open to flip this. You're taking get all this one. here. Exactly. I am spending one red to be able to flip any die, which okay. I now have the one, two odd that is required for this guy. So I'm not going to go up the track or anything like that. And I'm just going to. Huh. The totem of courage. Okay. So we have. I can spend X number, so I can either move up the blue or yellow track, or I can add this this card to draw to. And so I'm thinking of just keeping that because I don't have, it would be really good if I had a lot of resources of one type to jump right up the track, but I'm going to just keep this there. And so with discovering, that's another benefit. So the card, I had no idea what I was going to gain. But because I discovered it, I can repair it to any storage space. Sure. Yep, that makes sense. And so Beautiful. that has completed my first turn. So we go to me. All right. Do these just get reset back here? Yeah. So that's sort of the the die tray space that I've been holding. It's also uh, in person. I've been playing games where we actually use these to show whose turn it is, where you pass yeah. it as sort of a... Um, Funny enough, I can put it somewhere in the credits, but the uh, figuring that out when you had the episode of like how to encourage other players to like go faster. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. It sparked out of that because it wasn't for making them go faster, but it was like the 
play testing with people that you don't know super well, not knowing if they've completed their turn or not is right. like a good indicator. Right. Oh, cool. Okay. But in TTS, that's a pain in the butt. So we can, um, we can do, I think this. Um, awesome. Okay. So Man. if, so I can go next. Um, Okay, what do I need to work towards here? Let's see. Complete a row or column of four upgrades. Okay, I'm not working toward that yet. Have two influence tokens in the same uh, explore location. Are these the explore locations? They are. Uh, I thought they might be. Um, okay, well, let's see what the heck to do. I shouldn't do the same thing you did. That'd be stupid. So let's uh, um, let's just explore. We're going to move to an explore location. So that's going to take this here. Uh, if I move it here, I get to do blue this right and away. I get the blue, correct? Yep. So you'll gain the blue first. So I would gain the blue or I'll get the blue first. Okay. Boom. Uh, and then I get to move up on any track and also gain that same tracks, one of that same tracks resource. Is that correct? Exactly. Yep. Look at that. And so if I go up here, I would also get a yellow resource, right? So I get a would. yellow and a red. Exactly. And this lets me place an influence at your place location. Place an influence out. All right. So I'm going to go. Whoops. Let's move up here. So I will get a per. Wait. I get a blue. Yep. I also get to do this. If I put it here. That gets me this guy. Yeah. So uh, you'll right. finish out the turn. Oh, okay. So we'll, I also we'll... get to spend one yellow to do another one. So right? we'll cycle out the villager. So you've interacted with them. They have no more goods or. Oh, it happens right then. Deal. Okay. So yeah, it'll be move, gain the rewards, take the action, cycle out. Got it. Okay. So now I can spend a yellow. Sure. Why not? Let's just. Let's just play all the game's mechanisms to put another one out. Oh, should I have? This is my third one. Shouldn't one of these stacks be gone? Or was the first one not part of any of those? So the first one's not part of any of the stacks. So Got it. 20 total. So at the start of the game, everyone will have five stacks of three. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So now I can put another one. Let's see. Let's see. What am I going to do soon? I got three of the four blue I need. Uh, this will give me a nice yellow. Sure. So that. that actually goes. So influence from now on, whenever it's gained to be placed out, will always go on the location that you're on. Oh, so I have to put it here. Yeah. So setup is the only time that you get to choose where every, every time else is. So I've just completely locked this one down. So, yeah, okay. I, uh, I have to find a, find a new way to get blue uh, with this game. <laughs> All right, that was not intentional, but okay, cool. Thanks. So that, and so now so that's you my have turn. I flip this guy, needed. maybe. Yep. And then that'll cover, showing that you've gained that. And Hooray, one of, so now I can store an extra resource. And you are ahead on the reputation track. And, the and we'll just say over, whoever's win. winning right now is the winner. <laughs> that's that's the standard rule of, that's what uh, i thought that's how we that's how we do this <laughs> all right um, I, I assume i can just freely move these wherever i need to in my so resources can always be shifted between spaces okay um if you ever are like need more than you can hold you can choose which ones to hold on to and discard Very so if cool. you had a bunch of blue and you wanted red like there's no restriction that way very cool all right. I, I thought that through that well. So we are going to actually just barter. Okay. Um, I didn't plan ahead. <laughs> so Oh, geez. I'm, I'm not doing any planning at all. I'm just kind of, I'm the, this is what, all right. So one time I was talking to Ben Kennard from Date Night Dice and uh he was telling me his normal thing he does anytime he plays a game at the beginning so for me i'm always like all right how do i figure this out at the beginning but what ben's has mm -hmm. said is what he does is he likes to just literally just push buttons and pull levers and so i've kind of adopted that now and that's what i like to do every time i play a game for the first time just i just want to see what things ha what happens 
that is also my methodology of, you know, if it seems fun or looks like it's going to be fun, I'm going to do that. Yeah, let me do and that. And I'd say it works out for playing against Michaela, maybe one in every four times. <laughs> <laughs> She's too good. Because usually the fun runs out. She's but, too good. Uh, so I have bartered. I'm looking here at what is available. I don't have that many resources. So I'm going to take this guy. Not the discard. Not a lot to pull from the. This is where my my, my mouse starts acting up. Mm. But I've gained the purple, and so okay. I guess probably at this point, easy enough to explain. Didn't do it in the beginning, but relics are color coded based on what they do for their relic action. Green will just give you stuff. It's sure. sort of like there's no requirement to get things. Blue is a kind of conversion. Turn this into that, or spend this to get that. Okay. Red has to do with scrapping. And sort of like in order to activate its ability, most times it either requires like a setup for what's in the discard. So if you gained resources or to discard a tar card. Purple is ways of gaining reputation and brown is holding more stuff. But we have cool. taken a purple. So and you had to pay one for that. This was in the free spot. Oh, there's a free spot. I didn't even see that. OK, cool. Oh, that's and nice. so everything will shift so things will become slightly cheaper. Okay. And that's why thematically we're forcing barter to work as the title of the action. Um, so we've done that. Now I get to choose to do something. Um, so I will spend a blue, move up the blue track, which gains us, what is it gains? Gains us a red. And because and you did that how? Is... How did you how did you do that action? So Oh, you're I, doing I the, the barter action. Yeah. Okay. So I chose the top reward. Got it. Got it. Okay. And because my storage is full, I don't gain the bottom reward. And so I've completed my main action. And so then I would get to get two more red for this guy. And you could discard something and draw two. Why not? Um, Heck yeah, might as well. It was free. Might as well get yeah, two. Yeah, so yeah, we'll discard this one, which allows us to place an influence token as its discard reward. And we'll place that to get a blue. And you have to place it here because you're this guy's here. My, yeah. So now if you came and had to spend influence here, uh, and you were back at Ignis as well, you have the ability to place there because the first one's been stacked. Got it. And if we get to a point in the game where all nine of them are covered, um, they'll return to the players and sort of cycle out so you can keep playing that game. Oh, interesting. But we discard, so the last thing I need to do is draw and place. Um, sure. Place that there. And... And that was my second action of the game. All right, back to moi. Um, I kind of like the barter action. We're going to take a barter action. Just like Holy you. God. Just like you. Holy cow. Well, um, so let's purchase a relic from the market. Uh, let's see. This so one's... first, we're gonna move your cart back here. Oh yeah, let's move my cart back here. Okay. Um, this discard. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. If I take this one, uh, I'd pay one, and then I decide yep. right then what to do with it. Uh, or does it where have you to go on here? When do you get the? Oh, when you when you build it or when you what's the term? Repair when you repair it. That's when you decide if you want this or if you want to tuck it. Exactly. Yep. Got it. Uh, when you get the, the the reward, if you do, do you also gain the discard bonus? Uh, nope. Or is that a that different is only, thing? That the discard bonus is only when you're performing an action that has that X on it. Okay. So mostly it will happen with reds or if your storage is too full. Understood. 
Um, ooh, get more resources or trash three repaired relics to get two influence or two. What is it? What is the? What are the victory points called? Uh, rep. You can call them VPs if you want. Or reputation. No, I want to call it exactly what you what you have created. Go with reputation. Is reputation, reputation. Okay, gain cell reward no. from an, oppo Ooh, from an opponent right. storage. The cell reward from an opponent storage. Ooh, gain from the market if playing solo. Oh, cool. I like how you have solo stuff in there. And you can't take from the discard. I'm assuming. Uh, not base rules. No, but there are. Okay, I was wondering yeah. why it's face up. That's okay. Um, I see. I see. So it all, there it, are these these tiles here. Oh. Which are um, those little powers? Kind of reminder of setup, but yeah. So they're they're trades. So each merchant can have like a specific trade that they're dealing with, and one of them gives the option to always take the top card of the discard. Very cool. Wow. Okay, I am resonating for some reason with this card, so I am going to um, pay a red. And I'm gonna grab. So this shout card. out to uh, Jack. Jack of all. He created this one. Awesome. That was that was inspired that was and his named by him. Oh, I love that. He's um, been a huge help in the uh, back end of making this look presentable. Has he? That's nice. Good for good for him. All right, we're gonna do this. This is gonna require two, one, and one, two. Okay, I need a red one at some point. Um, then I get to get both base camp rewards. Yep. So you'll choose one as part of the main. So the the new verbiage is supposed to be uh, gain the other one, not gain. Yeah. You're right. I'm over okay. explaining. Oh, no worries. Um, so spend, wait, it's spend one to go up one of the same color, right? Yep. All right. Well, let's spend a blue. To go up the blue and then i also gain this thing yep. so you'll get to add it to one of the two open spaces in your storage very very cool that's cool uh let's go for this one because we want to try to ultimately get this quest here which is complete a rubber column of four upgrades under your board so ultimately i can maybe get that under there and that would be two so far um I paid to move not up. To, I don't... Not to confuse you, but if you yeah. also did this and upgraded all three, you'd have that row. But if oh, you're planning to take the cell or reward... column, yeah, no, you're right. That's that's a I, I, that's a better idea. I didn't not uh, of four well, the upgrades you didn't under want your. To do that. Oh, I see. I see. You didn't want to do that because you want to claim that. I want. So yeah, I, right. I want this thing. I'm gonna stick so with what were, I got. I'm gonna yeah, stick. You were doing the right thing. I just wanted to. Oh no! I like. I do like that. Um, okay, so that's that, and then I can do the other reward as well, which is gain a resource and discard a card or discard a card. So you always well, gain the resource. So okay. right now, maybe so you want it. Maybe you wanted to hold on to both of these. Wait, you always you, gain the resource, but this looks like you're. The and or would mean that you gain the resource or you discard a card. Okay. Yeah, I can clean that up. You know, I just, I just, um, that's how I read it anyway. That's how I interpreted it. Either I would take the resource and do it or just take one or the other. But you always get, the, okay, so that's good to know. So, so if, if the I flip flopped them, it would read more. So, like, Discard a relic and or. Yeah. Well, no, because again, the the or I think is what's 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 getting it confused for me. Um. Maybe maybe it, it should just be gain a relic. Optionally hmm. discard a. Yeah, and then and then yeah, somehow optionally discard that. Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, what do I want? I think I want a. Do I want a big bad blue? What do I need? I got the two blue. I need a red. Let's get a red. Okay. And do I want to discard a card? This would push me up a track if I discarded this card, yeah? Would. Oh, I'd have to. Oh, yeah, I see. 
Um, and this could get me a reset. Wait, no, I'm I'm re- wait. Are these green ones just in a two player game? They're just here to. Yeah. So in a three or four player game, it's just a blank spot. Okay, I like that. But it shrinks the tracks in a lower player count. Uh, you know, I'm gonna fucking do it. Let's just do it. Let's just let's just go crazy. And, I mean, is there a reason I'd want to go up here? I guess because it gets me further to get these better rewards. Because I'm wondering, because you know, this gets me a yellow, but this gets me anything. This also would break the leapfrogging chain. So even though you're giving this as an available upgrade to get, oh, I see. Right now, if you upgrade, you would go all the way up there. Yeah, I see. Hmm. Sure, whatever. Fuck it. Who gives a shit? Let's do it. Let's do it, boy Sam. All right, we'll go here. I like the uh, symmetry, so we're going to do this. <laughs> and uh, I think that's all, right? I think that's all. Sorry, that was a that was a lengthy okay. turn, but I think I got it. That is okay. I need resources, so we will harvest. So here. And we got a one, four, six. Okay, one, four, six. And we have an optional plus one to a die. And we are not even close to being able to discover that. So we will add a one to the one, making it a two. And I think we are going to go up the yellow track. Beautiful. And then you get get six yellows. Holy cow, that's a lot. Which is only three but you could take six if you wanted to get rid of red and blue yeah right and so i want this so i need yellow and can i i can repair this one as well so i need i need at least one so i need one more blue to do that i need one more blue to do either of them so we will take the three yellow and uh, that's actually I a better way to do it. that, I think. All right. Yeah, we'll just do that. That was a, was a crazy cool turn. Just got three resources. <laughs> okay. Very good. Uh, back to me, huh? Um, so rep- the repair action is how you get those cards. Let's see. So if I let's try it. We haven't done this yet. Let's do the harvest action. Um, let's see. You're so TTS proficient. I've oh, built no the way. habit of like assisting with. Oh yeah, no, I'm. I got it. I have got it. Okay, I am also far away from. Well, actually, I could do this if I added this to be a two. Um, I'd need to add two more. And what is the, what's the adding one? That's so you blue. Get, yeah, you're two blue. You could two sink those. Two blue to... would get me this immediately. Or, let's go back to, this was what I rolled. Or I go up again on this guy and get five more blues. Really three. Um, if I do that. Well, you know, you, you have a whole slew over here. Oh, right. These are available. I forgot about right. these. Oh, yeah. I forgot about these guys. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess I'm just racing up this track here. So we go here with the twos. So that will get five. We get five blue. blues. Uh, let's go. Whoops. Let's go. Oh, oh I, I, I don't have. I don't have powers. Can, That's okay. It's, no, it's all good. You. It is all good. One, two, there you go. three. Oh, you got me. All right. Let's go. Uh, four, five. That's a lot of blues. And then I also get this thing, which lets me put out a um, prestige. What was this called? Uh, influence, influence, token? influence token. And I got to go here because that's where my thing is. Um. Let's see. So if I go there, that'll push me up on the blue track again. (laughs) Uh, Sure. Let's go again. Why don't we? Uh, It gives me another one of these. Um, 
Well, it doesn't really matter right now. I also just put it here. There we go. Yowza. Wow, that's a turn. Uh, okay. And then there's more, <laughs> right? I get to do... <laughs> oh, no. that Yeah, I get to do this now down here. Exactly. Yep. Right? So I gain a resource, and then I can buy from the market. Yes, wow. Sir. Okay. Let's look for something that is heavy blue. Is there anything heavy blue? This guy. Uh, three blue. That's all it needs is three blue, actually. And it's even got so more you'll need, resource spots. You'll need five for this guy. Well, I got the two, two cost blue. And then the three. Yeah, you so mean if I, if I if I choose to do that? Yeah. If you choose to. Yeah, sorry. Right. Didn't want to make um, that decision for you. No, no, no. You're, I, I, I like what you're thinking, though. Um, that also takes a red. I only have one of those so far. So there's really nothing I can straight up build or repair right now but that is okay man three repaired relics to get two points or two reputation i should say that's pretty nice when you're only going to 10. i don't have those yet of course and <laughs> i don't really have plans to do it but it is nice uh sorry sam i'll i'll get moving here um oh, you're good i i appreciate you kind of talking through the thought process i think that'll help kind of Oh yeah, no, it's 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 really, I really enjoy these decisions here. I really do. Um, it's hard not knowing the cadence yet, and how mm -hmm. you know, like when I will need what I'll need. Because for instance, let's see, this one's going to cost two blue, one red, and one anything. So two blue, one red. I had one anything here. This one would cost me another red and a yellow, which I don't have. Um, I mean, I, I have, there's going to be other ways to get resources, I think. So with that being said, I think my best, I'm still going to take this guy, I think. Uh, so that's going to cost me one resource. We'll spend a yeller. And Did you gain the resource from this guy? guy? Oh, right. No, I forgot about that. Ooh, I'll take the blue. Nice. Um, and then that would have to go here because it's your only storage space available. Oh, I see. Because I can't put it there because this thing's there. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Got it. Okay. That's my turn. So we'll do that. I think. Yes, that's my turn. Ooh, I like okay. the activating these things thing. That's very Yeah. Cool. It's... Uh, that's very cool. It's funny. I've seen games played where... At the end of the game, the person's only had like two relics under their board, and then mm -hmm. I've seen other games where people have like twelve. Yeah, relic crazy. Well, that's a that's pretty awesome for your for design. I mean, holy cow! It, it's cool for like marketability, but you know, figuring out what's actually broken and overpowered is different. <laughs> well, doing it by yourself is going to be a lot harder for that for sure. I, if you went with a company, you'd probably have a developer with you that would be working on you know balance and stuff, but. Yeah, I get to wear that hat. But I mean, right. now that I know how to play, um, you know, I can try to play it with Natalie maybe, and then we can just try to fucking break it. You know, you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, we're not good enough for that kind of stuff at all. And there's nothing that I see right now. I mean, we're only a few turns in, but there's nothing I see where I'm like, well, why wouldn't I just do this every time? You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. not in here, which I like. So that's really cool. There is, um, I'm, I don't think it's the same, but you know how in Dominion there's the coin strategy? Yep. I fear there might be some of that with uh, these guys. So I had to modify the, because you can just like put it under a huge like resource engine, but I haven't seen it since I've nerfed them slightly. But I, mm. okay. I think, I think I'm just going to, the bullet and repair um so at the start of my turn i choose which relics i would like to repair and so i'm just repairing the cauldron so that will be one blue three yellow a red and an influence which you have thankfully opened up that spot there for me oh nice and i got your I back will then i'm here for you keep that i appreciate it it, uh, that was that was that. So I've now set myself up for when I 
barter next turn. I have two red resources left. You'll I'll get two, two more. to use so them. I'll get to at least use that once. Very cool. And what does that, that do for my fourth turn? That so allow me to discard, discard a relic up. and gain its cell reward. Cool. Wow, cool. Okay. Um, so that's it. I should have probably thought about what I was going to do on my next turn. Um, I think I might do a similar maneuver because I think I can get both of these guys. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, six, seven, eight. Uh, I need Bam. a red, a yellow, and then anything else. Yeah, I mean that's going to deplete me, but I mean this is the game, baby. Let's do. Let's deplete. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So we're going to repair. So I'm going to spend three. Let's see, uh, uh, the blues. I'm going to spend uh, one, two for that card. One, two, three for that card. Uh, one red over here, and one of anything else is a yellow. I also get a one of these um, influence. I keep calling them influence. Are they not influence? No, you're right. Those influence. influence. I'm going to take an influence, and I'm going to put it. Uh, what do we want to get back? Let's see. I'll just grab another yellow, I think. Um, eh. Nah, screw that nonsense. Give me a red. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. That's a bunch of BS. Why would I take the easiest resource to get? Okay. Uh, then I can trash three relics. No, I don't have those, so I'm keeping this sucker. Bam. Right. I have three blue resources left I could spend right now to get a prestige point or a reputation point. Um, yes, you can. But do I want to be oh. that hasty? I could also gain put a thing down, flip it, and reverse it at my, when I want to to gain the discard <laughs> bonuses from all the relics in the market. Oh, you got a cooler thing than I do. I mean, that is a kick-ass ability right there. But yours so, is capped at two. So I can do that twice. Yeah, okay, that's what that was. But still, holy crap, that's good. But then that doesn't include the discard pile, point. I'm guessing, because the discard pile is not in the market, right? Correct. Okay. Okay, okay. Oof, or do I just take the point right now? I kind of like this. I kind of like this. I'm going to keep it. Because now Alrighty. if I keep if I keep this later, yeah, you could tuck it on I, and I yeah. get this card right now, right? Which okay. if you're planning to do that and you already have this, you may want to look at the global achievements. If I'm planning to do that and I have this. Okay, global achievements. Let's see what do we got? Um, oh, is there one that has spots in your reserve? Have a reserve extension or brown relic under each main action. Uh, have three caravan records. Have six relics under the barter. Have six relics under the explorer. Okay, remove all your influence tokens from your reserve. Oh, for 15. Wait. Okay, no, I'm not close to that. Is, is this the one you were telling me about here? Yeah. Okay, gain 10 or more resources in one turn. End your turn with 20 or more resources in your caravan. Oh, okay, that's... I'm sort of starting to get up to there, too. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, I have 19. Oof. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, Sam. Uh, um, 22. Oh, you're right. I do. I do have enough. I can also spend a blue to relocate one of my relics if I wanted to. So I could put... Is this, a, is this considered a relic? Probably not. Yep. It's got to be the card. Oh, this is considered a relic? Uh, well, it no, but it's intended to work with this, is I guess. <laughs> um, okay. Sure. Uh, um, that that is a good point. I'll clean up that verbiage. Uh, do I want to do that? I don't think I do. I think I'm good with where everything is. Um, and just because I can use these now, I'm going to. I'm going to put these here. And that's the end of my turn. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm having a good time doing it. So <laughs> this is fun. All right. I so like I now knowing that you have the thing that I can do. I can't wait. I have to do it. It's a little barter. So we're there. That sounds, uh, I got a lot of relics though. That probably more. 
Is there? Can you, you get know, more personal quests, uh, or is it only on this space here? So this guy. Oh, here I see. Will right, you, you can get buy one. one for three, and okay. then there are. Have you seen anybody go personal quest strategy? Because it's really easy uh, to get the yellows. I have seen it through just the cards that they've ended up with. Sure. Because there is a relic action that you can spend yellow to gain personal quests. Mm. And then a lot of the rewards give you personal quests as well. Okay. Uh, you're welcome to go that strategy if you... Oh, I think it's feel... probably too late for me now, but I might do that at some point and just to see just to see what happens with it, you know? Just spend the whole game just getting yellows and trying to fulfill these. I wonder. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll just take the free one. Put it here. Those shift... And we can send a yellow to go up yellow, which would get us a card and not give us the bonus. So maybe we draw and discard first. So we'll get a red and discard, discard this guy for... For you yellow, yellow. another yellow. Get you could just take that personal here. objective if you want. Yeah, whatever you want. I'm taking it personally, that's for sure. <laughs> um, and now we can spend that yellow to go up the yellow track as the second, which gives us this. You're you're going up the yellow for me. Did oh. you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Right. 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 Yep. That's exactly what I wanted to do. I'll put that there. Okay, so I've done that. So now we'll run our little engine of red. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to skip this guy. So you can choose always not to perform relic actions, but you can't yep. go back to them. Ah, I see. That makes then, sense. You can't you can't spend resources for something you don't get until after. Yeah. And then the only thing that you can't skip is you must perform the main action. So okay. you can always choose to skip the caravan upgrades. You can choose to skip the storage and relics, but you must take wherever you move to in that action. So okay. like if you built a really solid repair engine, you'd have to repair to be able to run it. Are you not allowed to go to the repair action space if you have if you are not if you cannot repair? You you cannot do that. So you are correct that you must be you must repair in order to go there. Oh, finish with spending four to discard a relic. Oh, mine. Oh, yours is just discard bonuses. Ah. That's... So I'll just. Hmm. Discard this guy to gain one of these. And I don't have the yellow. Probably could have had the yellow if I ran that, but that's okay. So if you nope. did have the yellow, you would have been able to flip it. So like right now, you could have done yellow. it right now. Okay. Right. So it, it's at the point that these are. Um, acquired is when you'll make the decision. Do you then get this now? So because I have just completed this action, I do have access to this. this cool, time. cool, cool, cool. Which That's cool. I think we it's fucking want. bullshit, but it's cool. It's cool. We want blue, maybe blue. <laughs> have one of everything, like the infinity stones. Yay! And so that completed that action, which I have now completed a row of four. Boom. Bah. Bam. Wow. Shit, that's oh, cool. Fight, fight, the, fight the urge to dab on screen. <laughs> no, do it, man. Dab it up. That's still a thing. All right, is that it? Is it up to me? And so then this gets... Is this turn counter you're keeping track of? I can't remember why you're doing that. Just for posterity? Uh, or... Just seeing um, the how long like the game lasts in terms sure. of number of turns. Okay. Um, all right. Let us uh, 
let's use our fancy new tool. We're going to explore. Let's um, move to an open explore action. You know where I think it would be fun to go to? What does this do? Go down three to get, ooh, is that or trash and influence token from your board? Yeah, so there are three um, villager tiles that will give you the opportunity to get reputation. They each come with an either or option, so you can sort of help uh, prevent others from gaining them. I see. Let's so. get some blues, I think we might. Let's do this. Um, cool. Bam. And then I, if I want to go down three, I can get another one. Would I leapfrog? Yeah, so then you would gain another one of those. So you do get those again. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, I don't think there's a ne there's really a necessary reason for me to get another one of those. Plus, going down is probably not going to happen. But I'd... Well, would you'd I get the reputation point for going down. I'd get the reputation point, sure. Or I can trash an influence token from my board. But I have to do one of those two things? Or is just going here and taking yeah, the Yeah, so you, you have to be able to interact with the location. Okay, so trash one from my board is... I could get rid of this? Uh, I choose probably to do this one first. So it's still usable, but it frees up another space. And I could have done it if it was here. Yeah, so that would be a way to gain another. All right, so this probably point. wasn't the uh, wasn't really the most effective or efficient um, turn because I also can't do this now because I'm already we're maxed here. Uh, so you could spend to bump it out though. Oh, I could just bump it out. Okay, well I will. Yeah. Let's bump it out, and then so this is really the... the whole reason I did this was just to do something cool. Gain the discard yeah. bonuses from all relics in the market, so I get something for all of these. You get to go up a blue. You get right, the place let's... to influence out. Ooh, so those will go come up off a board. blue is this thing, which uh, this gives me one of these one of these guys. Yep. Ooh. Okay. Do I, and I is this, I flip this over and I see. Yep. So you I, can either put it above your barter. Okay, so it says spend any resource to produce a card from the market. What does that mean? So it should say repair. Um, ah, oh, oh, just instantly repair for one resource? So before even taking your action, you can spend one to pay its resource cost to repair it right out of the market. Oh, you have to pay it. You still have to so pay it. Its... Yeah, it's paying one extra to just immediately get it. Okay, or I get a resource, I draw a card, and I can discard one. Uh, oops, that seems cooler to me. So we'll put that. Where do I want to put that? This is the thing so I don't know yet. Oops, I have the wrong side. Yeah, I have the wrong okay. side. Um, this is what I'm not sure about yet is where to put stuff, you know. I guess if I'm drawing a card... That's is that putting it? You have to put it here. Yep. So it'll have to go into one of these two spots, and then discarding. Okay. So it wouldn't be probably great to put it on here, because I'd have to do that first. And so hypothetically, you'd want stuff on here. And so you would. I might lose one. Although it could be a decent way to get rid of a card that you can't that you can't repair just to get its discard bonus. That's true. Right? And then you also get to discard, though. So um, hmm. let's see. I think I'm just going to put it here. Uh, how do I do that? So if you uh, just, uh, like, above all lock. Right now, just the gizmo is what. What are you locking? So if, if I lock the card by right clicking yeah. and toggle lock, yeah. um, when I use the gizmo action, which I don't know, you might have access to that. You know, you can yeah. also just hover over the card and hit L. L will also lock. Uh -huh. Just so you know. Just so you know. So yeah, locking and dragging it under with the gizmo. With so the there's gizmo. Okay. the two things that um, 
I haven't written macros for are adding cart or uh, caravan upgrades above. And then if you choose to flip one of these guys, mm. I have to manually change the orientation in the gizmo to flip it as well. I see. Um, well, crap. Okay, so this didn't really do as good as stuff as I thought. I get rid of two of these, which is cool. But and I... Then that goes there. But I um, I can't do this because I don't have any car. Or is this intended to count as well? Or no? Um, so you would gain a track bump, two influence, and then a red resource. Oh, right, right. I'm not actually discarding. I'm just getting yeah, the discard bonuses. Right, 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 right. Okay, I forgot about that. Okay, so I do get the red, which gives me a yellow. Sorry, this is a red resource, not a red track bump. I I, I know, I know, for sure, of course. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then these will okay. go away. Cool, cool. Oh, damn, those go away, huh? I guess I yeah, am you... discarding them. Yeah, give me more to do it again. Yeah. And now I got to figure out what I'm going to do. Cause I'm... Yeah, now that's an interesting little... Um... Oh, wait. This is gone. Right, because you interact with that. That'll come up. This will come down. Okay, yeah. I, that, that gets away from... I was like, man, that's kind of a... Not broken, but, you know, I could always do this action, explore this tile, get rid of this, and then put it back on. Right. Which... So it's the cycling is a good way around that. And this guy is not always available. For sure. Yes, yes, yes. I think I just need resources. That's what I've come to the conclusion of. And what those resources are... <laughs> Who knows? Are pump 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 are gonna be we'll decrease this by one. We'll just get four blue. How about that? So we'll get Heck yeah, that's what I would blue. do. Getting blue is freaking sweet. So I got blue and I landed on that, so I'll get one of these reserve extensions. And I ended a harvest action with the dice summing to six or less. Ooh. So we'll flip that guy. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Ah. And I'm boom. And that was turn six for me. That's it for you. All right. I'm going to be pretty quick about mine, I think. I'm going to um, har harvest as well. Did you harvest? Maybe you didn't. I did. Uh, I remember. Uh, <laughs> 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 Let's see. Okay. Oh, this is exactly what I wanted. Uh, so I am going to go up on the yellow track and take six yellow resources. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um. I don't care about this, and I can spend one to take a mark. No, I get one, and Game then one, I yep. can, and then I can take a market. I can buy one from the market, right? Yeah. Hell to the yeah! Uh, there was a reason I wanted some of that stuff. Do I remember it now? Of course not. Uh, let's see. I want something that let's see gain a sell reward from the market row. Ooh, look at this! Look at this reward. Two caravan things. That's cool. Five reds to get. This is the a point only one. Oh, I know. Um, <laughs> a blue. Get rid of a blue to get a card and a red. Hmm. Get rid of three reds to discover a relic. Discover a relic. What is that? Is that just uh, drawing from the, the deck? And immediately claiming its reward or tucking it. Oh, discover is repair. Yeah. 
So no, uh, discover is matching the the dice combination. Oh, 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 right. I see. Or pay a blue and discard the market and perform all one-time bonuses on discarded which, which should relics. Should be sell reward. So that'll be the the what's in the reward spots. On every relic? Yeah. Wait. That seems to discard the market, okay, and perform all one-time bonuses on everything you discarded. That's basically how I read that? Yep. Wow, that's cool. All right, I will do this. So I still have to spend the resource to take the card? Yes. Because uh, it was part of this this thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like that. Let's put it here. Or what's this? Relocate one of your relics. Don't care as much about that right now. I'll put that there. Um, I think that's my turn. All righty. All right. I think so. I think, I think we're going to do some repairing. So I have the three blue for this relic here. Cool. And we have one and one for this guy here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we will spend, 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 spend. We'll keep this one. And gain a silver reward. What do you have for rewards? Oh, I'm just going to do what you just picked up. Might as well. Because <laughs> I got that blue. Oh, God. Um, so I gain a whole pretty bunch crazy of good. Yeah. That's a very strong action. Yeah, that for one blue. Did you pay the blue? I did. Wow. I can pay another one if you think it's too strong. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I mean I took the card for that reason, but like look at all the shit you get. For one blue. You get two of those things. Uh, I wrote it wrong. Yeah. Oof, my goodness, that's a lot of that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff. I mean, who the hell am I? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I have it as three. You have it written why as would three. It, why would it? Okay. Why would it be? So, no, sorry. I'm I'm looking in. So I built out a ginormous spreadsheet to try and just track all the numbers built off of treating one yellow as the value of one so we'll go off of the spreadsheet because that's what balance so i only get to do two of those so it's only two of it okay i'll be discarding two cards yeah okay that's still really awesome still wrong really strong but uh it is still really strong yeah especially with what's out here well i think i have to do this one Heck yeah, that's really sweet. Uh, I mean, that just basically gives you two abilities. You know, it takes like a lot of resources to get these ones. Mm -hmm. These ones are basically, you get two of these for one blue. Actually, one half of a blue. So I'm tucking that there. So this will go above that one. That will go above that one. And the other one I will gain. I'll do that one and just put this here. So I don't have the yellow, so I won't get to keep that. I'll go there. And I'm going to relocate this guy by spending my last blue. Okay. Where did he go? <laughs> Where did it go? What are you looking for? Uh, the this? purple card. Oh no, there should there should be a purple relic somewhere. Did it just go under the table? 
Uh, let's see. It would have shown back up if it went to the table. I'm going to break the game by rewinding. Okay, there's the purple. Uh, really oh, you had one tucked already, I see. This one. Oh, you're relocating it. Ooh, you're about to get a reward, eh? Is that your sixth one? Yeah. It's like you've played this before. It's like you've created this or something. <laughs> yeah, it's like I know the designer. <laughs> uh, so I shouldn't have any resources. He's a cleanup. And I gain this guy. Bam. Nice. And while I clean up for my turn, you are welcome to go. All right. Um, well, actually, let's do... I am also going to take that action. We're going to repair. Um, so we're going to repair this here for three. Uh, one, two, three. And then I get to keep that, right? Um, and then did I want to do this one? Can't remember. Well, we're going to do this one for sure. So that's one. And then four of something. Four of anything. Let's go. No, no, no. Whoops. Whoops, 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 whoops. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Let's get rid of those reds. And then I think I'm going to get rid of a blue and do and sell this thing. Does that go over here? Yes. Okay. So I now get two of these bad boys. I'm going to take this one. So that gives me one of these. And another personal quest which I will show the world, which is fill your storage with three of the same color relics. Uh, okay. That's cool. These I'm guessing wouldn't count as that. <laughs> um, oh, those are brown. Yeah. So if you go oh, they are? Those. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Under each main action. Um... And then I'm going to spend three more of these to do this one. Oops. Uh oh. So it just put it yeah, over the top of my. Uh, because I rewound the way I, I modded them here. Um, I see. Here, I'll take this off of there for now. Oh man! <laughs> Look at that! Holy it's a magic God. trick. <laughs> That's really funny because I think the card that they're all on top of. Yeah. Oh no, it was Jacksonman. I thought it was the one that's based off of Mary Poppins' bag, which would have been a really uh, that would have been hilarious. All right, perfect. Uh, so no, that's so all this is gone. Actually, Whoop. get on there. <laughs> it doesn't want to oh, get on there. It does not want to go onto that spot. That's fine. Oh, you just repaired that one. I'm a bozo. Yeah, it was just right. It was just this one. That's the only one that had the. Uh... This guy is also going to. So the way that I, I daisy chained the relics. So yeah. anytime it rewinds it, the button thinks that it's trying to put it in the first slot. I gotcha. Yep, for sure. So you need to kind of reset them. Yeah. Keep them. And I was trying to not yeah. have to do that on mine and it was Well it was weird, yeah. You just that one was just gone. Um Okay. So then I got this, which is complete a row or column of four upgrades under your player board. I got a row of four. Nice. Um so that will be a, a point there for me. 
Um, okay, I think that's my turn. Oh, wait. I could relocate one of my relics if I want to, but I don't. I'm fine with this. So, okay, back to you. And I've finally fixed my board. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so I did all that stuff. I don't have the resources needed to do that. Uh, we don't have the resources to take advantage of that, so I think we're stuck harvesting. I like that. I'm going to do that, too. Well, maybe not. Who one, knows? One, two, four. One, two, four. What does one, two, four guess? One, two, four gets us blue um or one yellow. or yellow yeah or you could get a yellow <laughs> one yellow you'd also get a market action though uh you know what we're gonna we need resources so we'll take the blue so we'll go up to get four blue <clears throat> two three, four, and then we landed on a wild, so we'll get a red with that. No, that's not red. I'm just making a mess over here. <laughs> I, I'm done. All right. Ooh, okay. This is a little bit... What do I want to do here? Um, I could go there. That is in the market. Yeah, that's pretty good. Ooh, that's pretty good. Okay. I think I'll do... Oh, but I can only... When you explore, can you explore back here, or do you have to go to one of these? Uh, it's one of the five, and it has to be a new space as well. So, so I cannot... barter is the only way to get back here. So I cannot explore unless I go here and take one of these, which I don't want. This is, these are rough. Oof. If you had one more blue. Yeah, this yeah. is a tough uh, loadout of the current state. Um, hmm. Damn. And there's no conversion. Well, uh, if you if you explore, you'll gain a resource first. So you could explore here. Oh, because that happens before I even take that turn, yeah. right? And then I would get... Okay, that actually, I think, does work for what I want to do. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. I will do that. So this happens before I even move. So I will use that to take a blue. And then I can draw a card. Uh, yep, so you can draw a card from the market. And then if you don't want to keep it, you can discard it. Oh. Uh, so I could get a red or... What's that symbol on the bottom mean? That is a repair. So you'd get to repair just one relic. Oh, an auto repair? Damn. But do you still have to? You still have to pay its resource. You still cost. have to pay its resource cost. I see. Okay. If you put it anywhere but the repair action, or yeah, I yeah. could sell it to get two more personal goals, which is potentially two points that could even already late game. Those could. So I wonder, could yeah. you luck into personal goal points like Takenoko late game? It's probably, huh? Possible, but the I think it's twenty five percent are you have to physically try and do. Gotcha. So like there are ones that you could, you'd, you'd actively have to work on them. So like okay. knowing that needing two resource or influence in the same spot, you could set that up early game and like hope into it. Okay. Um, so you could luck into it technically, but it would yeah, be not as easy as it seems like. Um, I think we'll keep that. That's fine. And then I will, I could, oh, Oh, and then there's the discard. So now I could also just discard it again if I wanted to, because that's the only <laughs> one I have. Uh, but nah, we're going to keep it. So now I move 
here, I spend the four blue, which empties me completely, but that's fine. I have plans to get another one of these things, right? Is that what this is? Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got. You may re-roll all the dice once if you don't like your first roll. Cool. Or spend two of any resource to discard the market. No, I like the... I like uh, this. Um, let me move this dice out of the way. All right, so you put it there. We lock it down. And then it, can I use the gizmo, or is that something you do? Maybe. I think uh, we could try it. It would be below the text button on the left side of the screen. Gizmo. And then uh, do I move? I click the move button. Uh, if you just click the gizmo. Oh, just click it. Yep. I see. And then you click on the card. It should pop up this little uh, like gumball. Yep. Where you can pull the arrow that the axis is on. Bam. I did it. Cool. Well, sort of anyway. Okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's not. I need. I need to do that again. We need to go further down. That's not quite gonna cut it. Ah, uh, won't let me. You can also move that text block out of the way too, if it ever is in your way. I see. Okay. Well, that's fine. Um, okay. So that was. Oh shoot! That, was that. That's that. Damn it! I had a. I had a plan, and I. I didn't realize that screwed me over. Okay. Oh, well, that's not a big deal. Whatever. Um, I was hoping to do this, but I can't. So I can do this, though. So, this um, so if I do this for the second time. You will uh, get two yellow, a first red. I, I get this point here from yeah. revealing that. And then I get... Yes, two yellow. Exactly. This is what I wanted to do. So I really want three yellow. And, and a red. A red. Yes, sir. Okay. And then those are all gone, huh? Interesting. The uh, um, yeah, you're... I almost think it might it might be when I read gain the discard bonuses from all relics in the market, that wording doesn't trigger in my brain to then discard the cards. I wonder if it if it says discard cards in the market to get their discard bonus to get their discard bonuses or something. I mean, I, I could maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong about that, but I, I, each time when I see gain the discard bonus from the relics in the market, it just seems like I would just get it. Like leave it and static. Then you don't and then you don't re re. And then you don't re uh, discard them, actually, because like there's that other one. Uh, what was that one you used where it let you get the sell bonus the, of, of something on my card? But I didn't do anything with that. I didn't actually sell it, right? Which seems kind of right, like yeah. the same kind of thing, you know? Like you're not you're not selling the card. You're just gaining the sell bonus. Mm -hmm. uh, I I read this this the same way where you don't discard them. You're just gaining the bonus from the card. I'm not saying that you change anything, but that's just what uh, triggered in my brain. You know, you're, you're discarding them. And I'm like, hmm, I wouldn't have known to do that unless I'd probably, there's probably a rule in the book that says specifically to. But I guess it's like, not, I, wanna, I don't want to say it's counterintuitive from the other one. It just seems like maybe mm -hmm. staying consistent with how that exact ability works would be easier to remember. Yeah, I totally agree with what you're saying. Um, and then note of it, so I don't forget. Time. When I eat food and forget where I am. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That is card 31. All right. So that means we are back to me. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I I have this cool barter thing, so let's do the barter thing. Hell yeah, I get to run this engine. Let's gain gain what do we what do we think, Sam? Let's gain the free one, sure. So we gain that from the market. Hey, it's free, might as well. Yeah, if it's free, it's me. <laughs> and we can go up the blue track. 
Yeah, but if you go up the red track, oh, I guess you, you just need one red, so you can get it from either one of those. Yeah, I'm wondering. Ooh. All right, I think we we got some movie magic going on. So, how did we want to do that? All right, so first one, we're going to gain the top. We'll discard the red to move up red i am purple so we'll For gain a yellow this? okay yeah nice. so we've completed that oh you, did you trick me out of uh i think i needed that red <laughs> yeah i thought you were going to spend a blue and then gain the red down here to then have two to then do this again mm, we can we can do that so but we spent the red in the yellow uh for the bottom we will gain a red because we have that mm -hmm. and we can discard this guy to move up any track so we'll move up the blue track which allows us to place an influence to move up the red track place another influence oh boy bam oh boy but we didn't get the third red we needed but that's okay that was still um, cool you still get to run a lot of cool stuff wait oh that's actually so we'll gain the two red and we can discard this one to gain a resource of choice oh i wish i could say that was planned <laughs> <laughs> And then we'll spend these. To... Mine is get two personal quests. Is that? Um, discard a relic from the market. Oh, that's a different card. Okay, discard a relic card from the market. That's three. Oh, you're going to do it? Speed was... run the end of the game here? thinking about it but the problem is then i can't i have that one there but i guess i i always have that one there mm -hmm. um, yeah you wouldn't be able to do I'm it so twice because of this top. finicky green one yeah gain the top card of the market deck I forget how. Oh, wait, it says it right here. Never mind. I'm not going to even ask you. Um, up here, mm -hmm. the numbers under them, is that just for placement or is that the amount of points you get? Uh, that is for placement and for solo. So there are small numbers in the influence track, there's some in the global achievements, and then next to the locations as well i see you okay, can so ignore it, all small numbers they're just so that is for tiebreaker placement got it but and you said farthest to the farthest to the left is is tiebreaker yeah so if yeah. if you if i go up here on my next turn guy, i will have the tie, break. the tie break yep yeah okay gotcha okay um yeah that's not confusing me at all uh for a second, I was like, oh, God, does the first person that go there get one point, and then the second person gets two? Oh, yeah. That you know, be... I I was like, that's crazy. Oh, he's Speed doing it. Got a red. Speed run. And then we get two resources of choice. Yellow. And that is my turn. Okay. All right. All right. Um, well, that changes some things. That certainly changes some things for me. I think we'll go here and repair. Do I want to do that now? I don't know. The timing is like here. Hmm. 
Maybe it makes sense to do this later. I think then, I just don't know how close you are to ending this. Hmm. So it takes about 12 to 18 turns, depending yeah, on efficiency. It, it, it may be outdated, more probably 12 to 15. Yeah. Um, hmm. Because I still need three. I have one at my disposal moving up one more track. And I potentially can work towards two here, but I don't have any more personal quests. You have one moving up a track? And I have all three of them kind of still at the start. Wait, what do you mean you have one moving up a track? Sorry, uh, this purple one here, if I can move up one more. Oh, oh, the oh, oh to then you can guy. go down. I see, I see. Yeah, if you if you go up on here, right? Only I still have yeah. five influence tokens in my reserve, so that freeing up that last space that you got. Um, I'm not I really close see to a that. way to get a couple. Um, Okay, let's figure this out. What do I do and when do I do it? I guess I'll just do this. So I'm going to harvest. Fuck it, who cares? It's all good. Let's roll these bitches. I can re-roll them again if I choose. Uh, thanks to this. So... Um, mechanically. Yep. Technically, this is happening after this is happening. Yeah, I was just thinking through that, yeah. Hmm. Um, it's not a big deal, but I guess it does kind of break the this happens first. Maybe yeah, this just says... Also... Yeah, oh no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just pulling up. Um, that is the harvest. I mean, you could just word it to say, you know, roll the harvest dice. If you don't like the roll, then take the main action. Otherwise, go right to the storage. Mm -hmm. you, know, you could do it, so you could get around it that way. Um, but let's see, what do I want here? I could get. I could get. I think five. it's also the the weakest of the harvest or the those actions. Yeah, re-rolling. Four, six. Based eight, off of the data, it seems to be the uh, least valuable. <laughs> okay, so I could keep this, and I could get five yellows. I would also get a market action. That's the only thing I can do with these dice. I can only get the yellow track. Oh, no, I could also get two on the blue or the red. Two red and a yellow I would get. Um, hmm, which is not you bad. could also spend yellow to decrease to go up blue. You could also use the free tool to potentially discover. Oh, I oh, see. Sure. I, share I see what you're time. saying. I see what you're saying. So I could spend a yellow to make this a three. Mm -hmm. Go up the blue track, get my point that way. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. That's good. Um, yeah, that's good. Okay. So we will do that. We will go up here. Um make a little respectable showing hopefully uh <laughs> then <laughs> um get five blues one two three four five and i did this and now i can gain 
anything and I want a yellow. And I can take a market action. Uh, sure, we'll grab this guy for, we'll spend a blue. And that's it, I think. All righty. I think, I think we're going to harvest. We got a one, six, Um, you want yellow? We'll do those. So we'll do those two, and we'll use the free tool to flip this one to get four yellow. Oh, I forgot about the free tool. I have not been using that. I've not been thinking about that ever. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Who fucking cares? I think technically last turn you could have used it to discover the relic, which mm. would have been this one. So I don't. I think you made the right decision. Yeah, it's all good. Cool. cool. Always that temptress of discovery. Yep. Did that. Did that. Landed on market. So market. Uh, da, 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 da. Sure, we'll we'll spend a yellow to get this guy, and we are done. All right, ooh, that's again, again, I'm at a little crossroads here. What do I want? Um, hmm, burn one to go up that track. Hoo 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 hoo. Let's see how to do this. I think this is the play. I'm going to barter. So I'm going to come down here. Um, I want this. Uh, so I pay. What do I want to pay? I guess we'll pay a blue. We'll put it there. Put her there. Um, put her there, champ. Put her there, champ. And then I get... Oh, wait. So now that it's there, I only get one of these bonuses now. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, doesn't really matter, honestly, what I get. So I'll take a red and I'm not going to discard because I gain my storage has three of the same color relics nice so that will get me cum a prestige Dunk. and that's it for me All right, let's let's repair. Shit. Okay, cool. All right. So we can spend one, two, one for that guy. We can spend one, two. One that guy, we need those. So we, we need both those. So we'll spend two yellow for that. So that is all of our resources for both of those. And we are at Ignis, so we have to place this here for that. So we were going to sell this one for its 
reward of this. Oh, I see what you're doing. That's going to get you this one. Bam. Gotcha. And then we're going to keep this one. Cool. But we are going to spend a blue to relocate it. I see. Under this guy. Oh, baby. So that blue is gone. Okay. And that is our turn. All right. Big stuff happening for me. Here we go. We're also going to repair. I'm going to spend three of these on this. Nice. Okay. Um, I don't know when order of operations. Should I spend everything I want right now? Uh, so you repair everything first. Okay. And then, and then we deal with result. what happens. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to spend these three blues on this. Nice. And then this is a... Oh, it doesn't happen the way I thought. But it's close. But I am close. Um, and then... That's fine. I'm still going to do this one. Okay. All right. So now I decided what to do. Um, well, first, I have these four browns. So uh, that will resolve. Here, right? Is that that one? So that will technically resolve at the end of your turn? At the end of my turn. And so you have this one that this guy will right. stay Right. So with. this guy gets placed, and I have to go here. Right? Yeah. So that puts me up on the yellow track, which gives me a card. Uh, I just draw it, right? Yeah, so that'll be from the top of the deck. Boom. Okay. Ooh, look at that. Another one. Um, okay, so then, crap. So, you have was... those, so you've paid for everything. Yeah, okay, so and these so two are what I'm resolving. Two. Okay, yep. so now i got to figure out what if I'm going to keep it or sell it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to keep – I'm going to keep this one. Definitely. Ooh. Yeah, it's from the bug originally. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, I can't choose to discard, right? I can just choose to sell it or... Uh, yeah, so you'd have to choose to claim its reward or keep it. Yep, okay, I thought so. Um, fill your storage with... rel. I'm just going to keep this too. Okay, then since I got those four things, this has gone off of my thing yep, that guy. here. And because I did that, I have cleared. Yeah, you have. Right? So then I take one from here. And then you'll claim and put that, that one as there. Well. Eight. Oh, shit. What I didn't keep track of. I don't think I did. I think I only spent eight resources. I guess we could find out, but that's fine. That's fine. I don't, I'm pretty sure I didn't get 10 resources sold. Uh, so that's gaining 10 in one turn. Oh, okay. Oh, gain 10 resources. Okay. For some reason, I thought it was spend for some. Okay. I see. Gotcha. Um, that was cool. That was really, that was a really fun, fun turn. Yeah. Because um, you... I got a bunch of prestige or reputation and that was really fun all right so i'm all <laughs> i'm all set i'm i'm to the point yeah. now in this first play where it's okay if i lose <laughs> i'm okay now <laughs> i got to i got oh, to you don't say yeah <laughs> you about to end it <laughs> no i think i have two more turns maybe less yeah so you have stuff mapped out that was i just shot my load there now i'm Ooh. now i've got no clue what to do but that was fun. I think I will harvest. Hmm. One, three, five. One, Man, three, that's, five. That's what tricky to do. Three, five. One, three. Five. 
Um, plus one. Awesome. So we'll make this a... Sam, what is this? Six. What's this black-looking card? There? That is draw a card from the... So it's in black and white in different spots. I'll end up figuring out the final image for drawing from the market deck. Got it. You just haven't, yeah. you just haven't uh, decided what you're Currently doing. at like half pretty, but every now and then you see the game of the light and you're like, ooh. <laughs> All right. So we are gaining six blue. And going up to blue, which will get us one of these. That is my turn. Okay. Uh, well. Let's go here. Uh, we're going to get something. Uh, and I want to get a red. I'm going to draw a card, but I could discard it immediately, right? Yeah. I will. Uh, so I can get another red. And then I could discard one of these. So that was that was oh discard. oh draw a card and oh I see okay oh that was both oh so I could have discarded so you a could one. you could keep this one if you want and discard a different yeah one. and then discard a different one um, yes no well okay I'm gonna need order of operations I think because I do there is something I want to do um. So, okay, here's what I, I'm just gonna tell you what I want to do. Like it's an RPG, and you tell me if I can do it or not. So, I drew All this. Right. I want to yes. discard this. You are allowed. The discard bonus lets me go up a Happens track, right? In this action, yep. Okay, so do you see what I'm, what I'm thinking here? So, yep. So, you can this move up goes that. up there, which lets me then take this because technically he's still there. Yep. Okay. And then okay. you would perform because all I of that's perform. happening up here. Right. Right. Um, two, three, four, five. Ooh, I'm close. I'm close, Sam. All right. So now I'm gonna Did move. Did you? Where? So you? Okay. You discarded this guy. Yeah. 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 Good. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. And yes. Then... That that guy's gone. But I'm now I'm doing this part of my turn. I took a red with that. I drew this. I discarded the one you just discarded, which let me get this. Now I'm going to go here and move. Um, I just need to think of where I'm going to move. Do I want to get three blues? This would also draw a card, gain a resource, go down a track. Um, this is a dumb question. You can't that move this when it's okay. Okay, so I'm no longer allowed to go on this track. No, in no any, dumb, in no any dumb way, questions. Shape or form, but this would let me draw another card if I went down. Um, man, this is tricky. This is tricky, but I do have to move. If I went here, I would also get three blues. Yeah, let's just do that. So we're going to go here. I'm going to get three blue. One, two, three. Um, also going to draw a card, right? Man, there's a lot of green ones here. I have been getting the green cards, man. Green um, <laughs> Oof. The sell reward for this is just gain a a point there. So you, you get no, the that's not a point. Uh, so the discard bonus is placing an influence. The sell reward is you get to explore and you don't have to pay the cost of anything. 
Ah, explore. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I gain a resource, and I have to go down a track of that same resource. Is that correct? Uh, you can go down any. So these ones aren't don't have to be in. Those ones don't have same. to be the same. Okay. Very cool. Well, the only track I can go down, but I do have to do it. Yes. Okay. So, um, I was going to use that. I think it's got to be. I guess we'll just dig another red. And then I'll move down this track, which gives me another card. And you can only discard these if you get something. So that if gives you, you were discard. to gain another card in this then card I game discard state, one. you could choose one of these to get rid of first. Got it. Or discard the gain, the get discard bonus. So let me ask. Oh, okay, never mind. No, no, no. That's that's good. I understand. Okay, so now this is gone. This goes up here. Do these all come off now? Yes, those return to our pools. Our little pool. That's cool. If I would have gotten to 10 somehow, that would have just ended it, yeah? Yeah, so you do still get three yellow for this guy. Oh, right, and then this happens. Yeah, I don't... Right. I was going to ask you, the only way to get these off is with... Um, this action and then there's a couple of relics that do it but i'd say the majority of the time rep like the the influence will be stuck here got it all right i guess that's it for me that was three four i don't think i yeah i got three seven i got i got one i know i didn't quite get there two three four five yeah Six seven. That would have been nice. Let's just try it. So we'll barter. We'll get two red to start the turn from this top action that I didn't tuck. Okay. And then two more red. Uh, and taking that early. I still have to get a card. Uh, free one, sure. And so we will take a yellow. So we're performing this bottom one. Okay. And it's a yellow and we'll discard this one. So this one you don't have to take both? I can if I want to. Okay. Because um, this is open because it's only the half card. Gain both. Okay. I see. But I'll I'll choose the order. Um but you do like have the, to the, take them both. The rewording of it is optionally gain uh, the or you may gain reward. both. Yeah, so it'd be like gain the reward not chosen during bartering. Okay. So sure. that it happens afterwards. Um, so that discarded to move up blue. Bam. And I think this turn is starting to explode. Uh-oh. Yeah, you got a long laundry list of stuff happening. Spending a blue... To take this top action, to go up blue again. Okay. To place influence on red, to gain red, and then gaining two more red. Skipping this to. this as well and then gain two resources 
Move down a track. One, two, three to gain a red. Uh oh. You gonna get that ten in one turn? I think so. So that gets me one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh shit. That gets me one. You're gonna get there with this card. <laughs> and then Yep. Did I gain ten? Because uh, so two Oh that I don't know. Two, three, three four, five. Four, five. Six, seven. Eight. I think I only got. Uh, I think I did get ten. If I'm mathing, if my math is mathing, because so it's two up here. Two. Yep. And then when I took this action here, three. I gained three there. And then the card I discarded moved me up blue, which got me this one for four. Oh, I see. And then I spent a blue to go up another one for this for five. Okay. And then six, seven, eight, nine. eight, nine, and then going down on the track got me the ten. Tenth. Oh shit! Oops, I just... I'm gonna have to rewind this because this is. I'm gonna clip this to be it. I've I've started a small YouTube series of just recapping absurd turns to show. Yeah, off that somewhere. was pretty sweet because you're gonna get three points in this one turn. So that goes there, and then I'll spend that that. This, this, that, or this, which frees up that to get four. Oh, geez, four in one turn. Holy cow. Have you ever gone above 12? Uh, not me personally, but I have seen it done. Weren't you two behind me? Uh, I don't Maybe. remember. I just want oh, to check the VOD. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> So if you can get two victory points this turn, you actually win because you have the tiebreaker. Well, you might have been one behind me. I, I don't even think I can get one this turn. So I, it's all it's. I think it's it's over. But let's let's at least see. Are you done? Yes, that uh, completed my. Let's at least see what we can do here. Okay, so my original plan with going here was to then mm -hmm. come back here and get this. But I was able to get this on that turn, which nice. was cool. <laughs> yeah, which was cool. Um, if there's a way I can somehow get prestige out, I don't think there is. So uh, going gain up the yellow. Cell. Well, I could, I could gain, if I go here, I could gain the cell reward from, oh, that's oh, top this, of the discard. That's yeah, top of the discard. Be, Never mind. This also should be like this. We messed up the bug we as in me right right no it's all good oh okay that's discard not any of mine i was like gonna say i could take this cell reward uh which i still I can do pairing is probably the best one, one two three four awesome. yeah i could still maybe take this and then potentially luck into at least a point or two a point um right there's no other way yeah, I think that's probably what's the, what else is on here. I have twenty. I don't have six. Yeah, um, this will get me four of down there. So that's not going to do anything for me. Eh, that's fine. Let's just repair. We'll just repair. Um, I want to do this one. I think because it is cool. And there's a there's a there's a chance to luck in, which would feel awesome for me and would be a. <laughs> I would if it happened to me, I would fucking hate my life. Um, I can't do this one. I don't think I can do any other ones. I think I blowing it all on this guy. We're going to sell it, and we're gonna take two of these. So before you flip them, uh huh. If this one is complete, a global achievement, you've done that. Okay. And then if this one is have two complete rows of relics repaired under your board, you have the blue to move this one there. So there is a chance not to get your hopes up, but totally to get your hopes up. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, honestly, I don't. You might have even been one behind me. I for some reason I thought you were two, but you might have been one behind me. And in in which case, it's moot. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Um... But even getting to ten on your first play, I would deem as impressive. Oh crap! How do I do? How do I do the thing where I look at it in secret? Um, 
Oh shit, I just created a window and I can't get, I don't know how to get rid of it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Eh, whatever. It's fine. I got end your turn with 15 or more resources somewhere on your board. <laughs> that, uh... eh, what are you going to do? <laughs> and this one is have three or more influence placed on relic cards under your board. Ah, Ooh, close. I have two. Yeah. I have two. Awesome. Hey, that's still cool. I got up to nine. Like I said, when I got up to eight, I was fine. <laughs> there was a while you were like at six and I was at like two and I was like, uh oh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. So like the 12 to 14 range is sort of where it's been coming in at, which it was sort of where I wanted it to come from. Just like uh, I know we're now have been live for almost three hours, but um, having played the game, if we were playing in person too, potentially plays about 30 minutes player like um, after the learning games. Well, I'll say this, though. Let's talk for a second, if you have another second. I got to go make dinner yeah. in a second. But I, wanna, I wanted to just tell you, I am so impressed with this. This is so fucking cool. I, it is, this is a game, dude. I mean, that's what someone, that's what somebody said when they played my prototype once. They were like, it's a game. And I didn't totally understand the, uh, what they were getting at compliment that is but now yeah, i do now it's like i just played this game i didn't feel in any way like anything was like what the fuck i didn't what the fuck once it was mostly just like how do i manipulate this it's got combos natalie's favorite snack it's it got, got it was, oh, you, I got tongue tied. I was about to beat you too. <laughs> it's got Natalie's favorite snack. It's got these like it's got Will and Grace, your favorite. It TV does, show. dude. My favorite show. It it has um multi-use cards, which I love. It's got these player boards, which I I really think this is cool the way you're tucking stuff under here to gain stuff. I mean, I didn't do as much of that, and and it seemed like that was a really good strategy for you you only went under one column the whole time but you got to pair it with this and then you got a couple cards it's got a bunch of cool different ways i feel like we didn't really score points the same way you know what i mean uh we scored points a lot of different ways i mean we eventually got some stuff that was similar uh, we both did pretty well up here i was the only one that got up to the top of a track you finally got to this on your very last turn um, but for a while I had gotten those like crazy. Uh, there was a lot of really, really cool things playing off of each other and nothing seemed to break it, which I like. Um, we got close to the point and I, I've captured a few um, tie in things here, but like right at, after like that 10th turn, things start to then snowball, which create these like weird game states that, I've I've had to re reel you mean like this. So that they, yeah, because if I had if I had kept going on, like luckily both of those purple cards, the purple all but one of the promos, um, are one time use relics. Even though they like, it's like a a two part thing to be able to get the point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's finally coming to the to that spot where. Uh, it only breaks every fifth game, not every other game. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I guess maybe it didn't go on long enough to see that kind of crazy nonsense happen. But again, I also feel well, like... Cool. I, I want to remove that. Well, I, so, it. well, okay, consider this, though. If the game is going on too long, because this is kind of... This is really a race. This game is a race. Mm -hmm. We are racing to 10 points. If I am going to take a long time down here... You know, and you haven't won yet, then the whole reason I'd be doing that likely is that I'm setting up some crazy shenanigans like this that's going to go mm -hmm. one, two. Now all of a sudden I get four fucking points in this turn. Or if I'm taking this long and you're like, well, he's way back there, I can afford to take a turn or two to do this to then go <laughs> one, two, three, four, and now he can't catch me. Um, it does, yeah. It definitely has that. Pain. I don't necessarily like, know if that's a bad thing, Sam. I, I mean, if you don't want it in there, I understand. But I don't necessarily think you know the the point of the game is you, we're racing to ten. 
And if you don't get there in time, there's the potential for some crazy shit to happen. Everstone is going to blow up or, you know, you're going to have, I mean, you got four points on one turn. That's fucking crazy. So I'll rephrase. I definitely want that. I just don't want it to happen like turn three. And yes. Okay. Completely agreed. I, I yeah. want it to be sort of like the, the, it was like the pinnacle of the, of the game. It was like the, yeah. It would have been like cool the, if I could have gotten at least one point on my last turn, so you would have had to have done that. Yeah, you know, like it, that uh, would have felt cool. But I mean, that's game to game, you know. But there was also like that linchpin of if you were able to get one more point the previous turn, I wouldn't have gotten any of that just because you were the second player. So right, I would have just won. Yeah, I know. It would have just like that would have been cool. Um, this kind of felt was this kind of felt Stegmeyerish to me too. Uh, um, Jamie has been definitely a big inspiration in terms of like the, you know, tapestry is very polarizing to a lot of the people in the hobby. But the, I like tapestry. Uh, tapestry is cool. I grew I grew up on Hearthstone, and I know from like a competitive gameplay, it's terrible because there's too much RNG in it. But mm. the I would sp- spend hours just like building decks that could get cards that it shouldn't have just for those crazy sequences. Mm-hmm. So I, I like. I love games that, you know, I'm sure you could teach this to Natalie and just be like, hey, can you use the four actions? Boom, boom, boom. Don't need the instructions for that. And I know there's some verbiage things that need to be cleaned up, but it's getting to the point where it's like the, it's a very simple thing to understand of what you need to do, but how you do it and like the decisions you're approached with is like my favorite part in games that, like Wing Fan doesn't have a ton of it, but it starts to introduce some of that with like the birds that you can keep. Um, Tapestry's kind of got that with the sequencing of uh, how you move up those tracks. But you know, Dune Imperium, I know people bash on it for not being really a deck builder game, but like that first that Dude, early awesome. game state where you have to think about which cards you're actively trying to buy from the market mm-hmm. is like and building around that. Uh, that's sort of what inspired these cards and the accessibility. I think Stonemeyer, um, they do a really good job at making games approachable and giving you more than um, a, like it, it's like that step up uh, in complexity with still being digestible, even though it can tend to sway people one way or another. I want to thank Sam. Uh, McDavid again. The second time I've said your last name is that actually how you pronounce it? By the way, is it McDavid? Uh, nope, but that's <laughs> McDavid. So think of David. Yeah, it's just McDavid. McDavid. Okay. Um, sorry, uh, Sam McDavid. I, 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 I'm not calling you that ever again. Sam McMeeple. Uh, uh, what half of the big meeples don't play an eight thank you so much for showing me your game everstone it was freaking awesome hopefully you guys all liked it and we'll um talk about it more on the show coming up here on episode 118 of the game casters and then sam i don't know if you have a kickstarter like time you're gonna get it out there sometime next year uh, quarter one of 2024. Quarter one, 2024. Yeah, that'll look be for Everstone live. on Kickstarter. You're going to want to get a copy of this because this is fantastic. Big uh, Gamecasters Discord lur- lurker. So the easiest way to get in touch with me is probably through the Gamecasters Discord. Uh, Hell yeah. One of the on the few... Discord. What are you doing if you're not on the damn Discord? Get on the Discord. Talk to Sam. Uh, get it, Get him to give you a play of his game on Tabletop Simulator right now. And other than that, thank you, Sam, and we will see you next time. Uh, I'm Ryan, and you've been watching the Gamecasters. Have a good one.